Well, good morning, wherever you guys are out there in racing land. Welcome to Flow Racing's coverage here on Facebook of the 35th Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals practice sessions presented by General Tire. This is group number seven. First six groups are often in the books, and uh, first six groups are the ones you're going to see racing tonight. So you're not going to see any drivers that are in competition tonight here within our practice feed, but going forward, Drivers you'll see on Tuesday through Friday night are uh, coming out on the track in order, in numerical order for those nights. So this is the first group of cars, again, session seven, if you're following along at home, for what will be running on Tuesday evening. My name is Caleb Hart. Chris Wilner joins me in the booth here on the Flow Racing Facebook feed. Look at Cannon McIntosh, who we had some questions on a little bit earlier. Is McIntosh actually missed his practice session that he was scheduled for earlier? However, things a little more casual as far as that goes. If you uh, miss your practice session from earlier, you can file into one slightly earlier or slightly later, depending on where you want to be. Yeah, you certainly can. We still changed something as well. Uh, now, actually, a little bit earlier than he was expected to. I would think that would give they were able to give them an extra set of practice laps, being a uh, first time coming race at the Chili Bowl after running that Millbridge event there about a month ago. So as we continue to take a look at practice, not too many issues so far, but a couple early issues for some heavy hitters, including Zach Dom, who wasn't even able to take the track in his hot lap session number six, seven. Had to get out of the race cars. We look at Cannon McIntosh. He was scheduled to run in the fifth practice session, but Cannon able to make the call for this one as just like that, we check off session number eight. Taking a look at the 7U of Kyle Jones there in the infield. So mark one off of our follow-up list with Cannon McIntosh, but uh, add one again as you guys have been watching practice for a little while, just didn't have audio to it uh, with Dom and the 5D. Yep, D Zach Dom had issues, and then we saw Frank Flood just before Caleb and I both jumped on the air having some what looked like motor issues. So two names uh, that are synonymous here in the Tulsa River Spirit Expo Center having some early, early issues here. Now, they've got all day to fix her, and again, the cars right. that you're seeing right now are not going to race until at minimum Tuesday night, as we are in Tuesday night cars as we speak right now. What they're doing is they're rolling two sessions out, letting them get a little motor heat, roll around a little bit, and then they're sending the cars from the second group of that in. So this is the second group that was just out here at the session number eight. As you get a look at the 4D machine, it was not scheduled for section session seven or eight we'll see if we can run down who that was we do not have a transponder loop up and going at this time the building hasn't fired that so we're not going to have lap times for you guys we're going to have to be visually identifying the cars as they come across now some of them pretty easy you're going to know the kevin swindell 39 car with logan cv in it you're going to recognize the gloss and marshall cars uh the batwood cars of obviously the keith coons cars we'll try to give you a little look onto who some of the other names are that are out and on the uh, group Sweet. Session number nine looks like we'll have Noah Harris, Brendan Bright, Charlie Crumpton, Tristan Lee, Corey Elison out of the All-Star Circuit as champion sprint car series, Kyle Bellman, Kevin Reed, Kevin Kelby White, Cole Bodine in the Driven to Save Lives machine, Howard Moore, and Tom Davies will make the call for this practice session. Cole Bodine, a former A-Main starter, but Corey Elison's a guy that we talked to, one of the many sprint car drivers coming over to run the Chili Bowl, the likes of Aaron Reitzel, as well as Brad Sweet. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't know. I don't think Eliason's made a Chili Bowl start. Corey had a uh, wonderful career out in California in micro sprints, was a two-time Debian Speedway Clay Cup winner. Um, so he is familiar with, I'm going to say, small car racing. I don't remember an overabundance of midget racing from him. In fact, I don't remember really any at all. He, as soon as he cleaned that uh, jumped out of the micros was into a wing sprint car was very good in it i think though we've got a whole another group of practice before we even need to worry about that as i think this is eight that's rolling out there at the moment and okay it's not defunct of big names either you're you're looking for guys like meserol facinto beeson golubic etc and again these aren't set in stone you've got a little bit of grace to get out with the group that is Michael Facinto. Remember Facinto. Look out. Trouble for Thomas Meserol early. This is the first incident we've seen in hot laps. Looked like he got up on the bike there as you were just talking about. Facinto with a third place finish in his prelim night last year. 
But Thomas Mesral, another gasser, he locked himself into the show a year ago. Had to go back home to Indiana. And then, oh, my goodness. Then the story developed of him getting a police escort back to the building just in time to make the call for the A main. That was something. You remember that. He did uh, bad weather in the Midwest. Had to get home for reasons. Had to come back. Couldn't get a flight. Flights kept getting canceled. Flights kept getting delayed till he finally got on one. I mean, the call was going out amongst the motorsports world. Who can go get Team Ez to get him back yeah. here and make the show? And uh, right as coverage uh, ended on the pay-per-view side and started to go live over to Mav TV is when Team Ez got into the building and was ready to go. Big, big drama, and then he ends up having a relatively decent night. Yeah, he certainly did. It was definitely eventful. As we welcome uh, Scotty Cook, I believe, is right Scott, here next yeah, to us. Yeah. Uh, We'll get, we'll get him online we'll get here him in a up. second. Yep. But, yeah, that, an incredible story that was. Team is back with RMS Motorsports once again, RMS Racing. As he's going to get on the hook there and take him back to the pit area. So, like I said, first major incident so far of hot laps as we are working session 8 of 29 today. Here's Shane Golubic, Matt Wood Racing, Elkro Ford Entry. One of the best guys in California that many of you may or may not have heard of. Golovic, potent in a midget, potent in a wing sprint car. Take a look at Jason Pursley in the 9P. Pursley making some noise. Had a heck of a year running Power Eye full time as well as USAC for Keith Coons Motorsports. Is there looks like is the 5D of Zach Dom. So was able to figure out some issues in that white 5D. As we take a look also Jonathan Beeson now underneath Zach Dom. Beeson. Multi-time A-Main starter, finished second to Larson in his prelim night last year. Coming in motivated this year. We'll touch on that a little bit more as you look at the nine junior. That's Derek Hagar. Hagar, one of the wing sprint car stars in the south. Aiden Reinbold, it looks like, in that 19Z. So Reinbold in that one. But you mentioned Jason Persley. You know, last year he was here as a spectator. Wasn't quite old enough, although he ran... You know, USAC and Power Eye, and boy, you could tell he was chomping at the bit to get behind the wheel of one of these things. So he's been ready. He did had a good shootout last week or two weeks ago, and certainly uh, is looking to capitalize on a good run here this week. Personally, part of the team debuting under Keith Coons Motorsports in the micro ranks yeah. and uh, showed, showed well, made good laps, had lots of speed, and was a contender. Yeah, we'll have to ask Keith what it's been like this year making the quick turnaround. Usually he's not in the building for the shootout, so they had to quickly get those cars ready to go after a good micro run. You've heard to a T people saying who go and run the shootout and then come and run the Chili Bowl. It's one, about seat time. It's mm -hmm. about getting on the track. And two, it's kind of about washing away that allure of being back in the building real fast getting the cobwebs out and not being overwhelmed by the fact that you're on Expo Raceway, right? Which sure. is a big deal for a lot of them because you step into the building and there's a magic in here. There certainly is, and I could feel it this morning at 9 a.m. when we rolled into the building, and you'll feel it all throughout the week. And, you know, we mentioned another guy that's going to make a first-time appearance, you know, Brian Carber won two drillers. And so you think he comes in with a lot of confidence, but he even said, I'm still nervous. You know, being in a Keith Coons Motorsports midget for the first time at the Chili Bowl, a place that, you know, Keith has had so much success in. It's been an incredible, you know, run for him in the micros. And now we'll get to see what he does in a midget here a little bit later on as we get the next pair of groups down the ramp. Take a look at the NOS Energy Drink Ramp Cam. Yeah, how there. about that? It'll be a busy place all week. Yes, it will. Tempers stayed relatively cool at the Tulsa shootout. We were surprised at that, but uh, we expect shenanigans on the ramp cam at minimum coming up this <laughs> yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. And shenanigans might be the nice way to say that. Next group of car, I think Matt Westfall coming out on the racetrack. So once again, we'll bring two groups out, and then the second of the two will pull into the infield. That way we expedite the hot lap session. Once again, everyone entered in the 2021 Chili Bowl will run hot laps today, this morning, until around 1, 2 o'clock, whenever we get through our 29 groups. And then 5 p.m. Central Time, Caleb. It goes down on night number one. A little bit later start uh, yeah. for this. So, again, if you're uh, watching it on the Flow Racing Facebook page, five central start here tonight. And uh, we will be on the air. You'll see live video of the practice sessions that are going to go on 
beforehand, and we will have a pre-race show. Audio starts about quarter tell, if I remember right. Yep. So we're going to welcome Scotty Cook. Good morning, Scotty. No, no. I don't know. I don't know. Here we hear they... you. You're, you're live, Oh, bud. you do hear me? Yeah. Well, yeah. I couldn't hear you guys. <laughs> so. Well, see those little knobs? How about you that? Well, tur- I think they're maxed out. I've been uh, twisting. Yeah, I don't know. But, weird. well, cool. I don't need to hear myself as long as you <laughs> Yeah, we can hear you, <laughs> Yeah, man. good morning to you fellas, and uh, good to be back at the old Expo Center. And, uh, you know, just like you guys were saying about uh, the electricity that uh, amps up all throughout the week, culminating in Saturday in this building, it all begins this morning, as you were explaining, Chris. Uh, You know, it's not as though these guys just run down this ramp on their practice day for just a little shake shake. It's, It's high anxiety and high action. And as we've seen already, you were speaking with Zach Dom having problems already. And so, uh... This is when the all of the anticipa- anticip- anticipation ends and yep. the uh, electricity amps up all throughout the week. So, yeah. uh, And you certainly can learn some things. You know, we talk about there's 29 groups. So, unfortunately, if your draw was one of those, well, w- with your heat race and with uh, your prelim night, if you're going out pretty early, one of those first 10 groups here, It's still a little bit of a tacky racetrack, still a little bit greasy, but there's some guys that are going to be in that group probably 11 to about 18, 19. They're going to have a really good idea of what this racetrack's going to do once their heat race time comes on their prelim night because that's how this track's going to shake out. Again, you're looking at cars that right now are scheduled for Tuesday night. Uh, there's been some lineup jostling. I I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't some further lineup (laughs) jostling. Push me back a night. Um, But again, these are... Cars from 9 and 10 that are out there, they're all going to get engine heat, and then they'll pull the session 10 cars into the infield. See Nick Drake there on our speedy cam. Nick out of North Carolina. Father Jay Drake has some success in this building way back in the day. Now Nick, Nick's been very good in this building. He's been super close to making the AMA. Last year was just caught up in someone's mess there in the B. So we'll see what he can do. Part-time midget racer. But when he comes in this building, he's pretty good. So 55, watch out for him as, once again, both groups will circulate. And the second group, this group 10, will pull in the infield. Give you guys an idea of how we're going to do practice coverage here for you. Everybody's going to get just a couple of seconds on the screen. Just a couple of seconds. That way, if you've got a certain car you're looking for, you can see your favorite driver on in that. And we'll try to touch on some of the names that we know a little bit more about. So we're not going to focus on any one driver over the course of this. Just let everybody get a couple of seconds as far as screen time goes. World of Outlaw Sprint Car Competition Director, Mike Hess. And just because he rides a four-wheeler and directs traffic does (laughs) not mean... That my old little buddy from the state of Illinois is not a wheel man. Mike Hess can still certainly climb up on the wheel. And this is typically one of the places where he showcases his talents and does quite well. Mike Hess has uh, shown very, very well in this building. You are correct. See how well he keeps at it. There's the Rudine Racing Midget with Corey Eliason in it. One of two Rudine Racing Midgets you will see here over the weekend. Tristan Thomas will be aboard the other one. Good look at that down the back straight away. Toyota power on that routine racing midget, so it should be a potent entry. Yeah, and you know, you were mentioning too, his sprint car guys are here crewing on this midget with Rudine Racing, so it'll be interesting to see how they adapt. Not only Corey to a midget, but also the guys wrenching on it too. Uh, Tyler Tessmaker has uh, wrenched on some good sprint cars in the past. Guys that you're familiar with, Scotty Cook, is Tyler's crew chief for Matt Covington, Seth Bergman. Um, Um, And it seemed as though once he joined the Rudine team that it was right there in his backyard and uh, He's fit in very, very well. He's worked with a, f- a few different crew chiefs along his stint there yeah. with Rudine, but Tyler is very happy and I know has become quite an integral part of Rudine Racing. He uh, started as just a wrench and quickly ascended to crew chief status within that team itself as uh, they were running a lot of West Coast stuff, then he went back to run the All-Stars. Tyler, good wrench. He'll figure out the midget stuff well, real he, quick. You know, obviously, years on end on the lucas oil american sprint car series tour uh seeing how that young man operates and how he works no matter which team that he worked with it is all business with him and uh just 
such a great young man from uh, up there in your neck of the woods over the border right they're just over the border from you right they are uh team headquarters is liberty lake washington which is a suburb of spokane which spokane's about second or third biggest city in the state they are about a four and a half hour drive from my home it's a little ways i'm, I'm thinking Ty, i'm talking tyler tyler's from canada is he no well, okay uh what's the first what is that british Alberta? columbia i'm sorry british columbia yes these hot lap sessions it's also an it gives you guys at home a good idea of all the different camera angles we have we see our speedy shot here going down the front straight away towards turn number one we saw the speedy shot in turn two that got a workout during the shootout oh my goodness we saw i some... think when i was in the infield every few races we had to go fix that thing uh it it certainly well. saw its fair share and especially <laughs> when we had that monster aggressive cushion yeah. for night two and night three where that was one of the biggest berms i've ever seen right? on this racetrack man it Honestly, was fun it was uh pretty goliath and so far as that uh, speedy cam is concerned i think my old dad uh used to tell me boy you you knew what you were getting into <laughs> right yeah gives you a really good idea i mean uh if you're gonna put that thing there you know you're gonna get some uh, in your face in your lap maybe a cracked lens or two action <laughs> and that's what we've seen yep we certainly have built for durability with speedy cam over the shootout and we'll see if it continues hopefully we don't have an overabundance of cars flipping up and into the corner flip count by the way is zero so far knock on wood tony bachoven is the official keeper of the flip count so we've got to defer to him when it comes time for that as you get a look at kyle bileman's 31, Corey Eliasson in the 26. That's Tristan Lee in the 23T, his dad, Ed Field, Zach Gar for him. Charlie Crumpt in there in the 22C. Nice blue and white paint scheme. Into the corner, car unidentified as it flies the front end. We'll say it's the 20 of Noah Harris. Kelby Watts, 37. There's Colbo Dine in the 39. New colors for the Driven to Save Lives machine there. There's one of the terrors of the Mid-South, Howard Moore in the 41X. Boy, he can wheel a sprint car something good. Would you look at the 36 of Kevin Reed. And just like that, hot laps for session number nine are over goes quickly and again we don't have the transponder loop up the building so we can't tell you lap times or who's quick or not you just kind of gotta watch your guy and hope they <laughs> keep the rubber side down through these practice sessions yeah and just looking at that racetrack that we just had with group number nine already starting to widen out a little bit still holding a lot of moisture you know we knew gravel was here all week fine t uh fine combing this racetrack making sure it's right where it needs to be if you remember last year if you tuned in to the chili bowl they actually had to rework it. I believe it was after Monday or Tuesday, and they used iRacing, the popular sim that a lot of these drivers use. They had to use the iRacing schematics and the scans to reshape one and two to make sure it was to the liking because uh, Gravel was able to do that and, and make the racetrack better. And indeed he did. If you recall, it came out just the way they wanted it to, and it, it was a pretty m remarkable thing and a sign of the time and the crazy worlds that we're living in right now such that they had to rely back on yep. the iRacing tech. It's amazing what technology can do these days. Unbelievable. Um, and as for this year, this racetrack is as per usual. That's yep. what makes this uh, racing surface uh, and speedway so unique is because the dirt is so maneuverable and workable. Yep. And they can... They pretty much got it down past the rocket science such that they can whip the sucker up just the way they need with a little tickle and a little sprinkle and uh, you flip the switch maybe we need a 15 20 30 minute downtime to put a blade on it and redo it but no matter what you need or want to do to this racetrack it can be flipped remarkably quick cars from session number 10 again these are tuesday nighters who are out on the track making laps at the moment get a look at matt westfall 54 car westfall non-wing ace from the state of ohio ludlow falls ohio if memory that serves me sounds correct. right make their way down 
down the front straightaway. There is Mike Hess, competition director for the World of Outlaws NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Series. like Eddie Tafoya. It's either Eddie Tafoya or Curtis Jones. Well, you think hot laps are important? <laughs> A lot of passing going on here early. That was Danny Stratton in the 68. Following him behind him. It's fast and furious out there trying to keep up with who's out, who's not. We saw Mitchell Davis there in that gaggle of white and red race cars. As there's Nick Drake in the 55D behind Matt Westfall. Nick Drake just got married a couple weeks ago, right before the shootout. Congratulations, Nick and the missus. As that'll end session 10. We're going through session number 29 here this morning. Morning into afternoon. As... Currently 1021 Central. So if you're approaching lunchtime on the East Coast or still waking up on the West Coast, wherever you're <laughs> tuned in from, glad to have you on the Flow Racing Facebook page. Caleb Hart, Chris Wilner, and Scotty Cook all in the book booth with you. Just kind of giving you an idea of who's who here on the practice morning. Group number 11 is at the bottom of the ramp coming out now. And group 12 will push out with them for yep. motor heat, and then they will stage up in the infield getting ready to go. You see everybody obeying by the mask mandate. Masks must cover nose and mouth while you're in the building, and uh, did a really good job with that over the course of the Tulsa shootout. Did a good enough job with it that we get to come back and play here at the Chili Bowl. Well, so you know, uh, I thought a lot about that this past week off, and I, you know, I thought as much as we all did, everyone's so compliant throughout the week of the shootout. But my thought coming into, z into this is it'll be interesting to see because we know the atmosphere of the fan base of the fans here tend to get a little rowdy, a little fun, a <laughs> little crazy, a little, especially those over there in turn turn to the old top row folks but uh this year you know kind of a different world we're living in everybody will come and be be here to have fun but it'll be interesting to see to how cooperative everyone will be but i'm quite sure they'll make the best attempt oh yeah i'm all for getting rowdy just wear your mask and right abide by the rules and you can go right. as crazy and, as you want in this building and trust us folks uh you know there there's not any hiccup policy here really uh, I believe, I don't want to speak out of bounds, but the only time you should not have a mask on in this building is if you are taking a drink of fluid or getting a bite of food. So uh, it's just how we're doing. It's what uh, sacrifice we have to make to be able to continue to enjoy what has become really literally the most beloved event in uh, all of motorsports, especially dirt track racing. Quick point of clarification, we're going to be on the air till 12 Central. 12 Central is we're going to be on okay. the air, too. So we're going to get as much practice sessions as we can in on the air before 12 Central. If they're not finished up, they're going to keep practicing, but we're going to end our coverage of practice at 12 Central time. So you got another hour 45. Just we'll get a lot of race cars in there. Our apologies if uh, we don't quite get yours. If it's one of the late Friday practicers, we, we apologize if that doesn't come in. But again, Flow Racing on Facebook, our coverage goes until... 12 central in preview of tonight's night number one of the 35th annual lucas oil chili bowl nationals presented by general tire here on flow racing first time live on flow we are going to have every lap of preliminary action for you tonight through friday so monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you're glued here to flow period end of discussion if you if you go do something else that's on you and you're very silly uh saturday <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> we start at the we start at the crack of dawn and they haven't said when we're starting saturday morning yet but we are going to have every lap of the prelim mains from probably about a p main i'm guessing oh p oh or a p right around there up until we take that break before the pole shuffle 
and then the CBNA. Mav TV grabs the broadcast when it comes to Pole Shuffle, CBNA main. So the live video coverage here on Flow will conclude sometime right after the end of the final D main event and before the start of the Pole Shuffle. Then Mav TV grabs it. Um, I saw an announcement about Lucas Oil TV this week, but I got to look into it a little bit further. But Mav TV for sure, if you want to watch an over-the-air broadcast, going to have the CBA main event and the pull sh shuffle for you come Saturday night here on Flow. We carry it through like about the O main through the Ds. So a lot of racing action to come here on Flow, and we can't thank everybody enough for also the content. While you have a oh. break in the action after hot laps, go check out all of the videos that they have posted on the Flow Racing website and the app. My goodness, I think I've watched every Chili Bowl from 1992 on, plus interviews, previews. If, if you need, if, if anybody, if you know a racing fan that has no idea about the Chili Bowl, tell them to go watch some of those videos. They'll get caught up to speed real quick. Tell them that with their Flow subscription, which they should have already, yeah, it costs nothing additional. No. I mean, on top of all the other great stuff that Flow puts on, yep. you get every lap of the All-Stars, you get every lap of the United States Auto Club. Heck, this week you could watch Vintage Snowmobile World Championships. I if actually you watched to. that last night. It was incredible. It's pretty unique, right? But... You don't have to pay any extra for Chili Bowl. Right. This is with your Flow subscription. So... Tell them to tune in. They should have a Flow subscription anyways. If they don't, Chili Bowl alone is worth it, and you get all kinds of great other stuff, including the archives of which you can get lost literally <laughs> for days. Well, there's a look at the one car. Very familiar in this building. The five-time Chili Bowl champion Sammy Swindell out making laps. He is scheduled to go off in session number 12, getting a little bit of engine heat. How'd the whole Viroc deal end up? Yeah, we'll have to get into that. I do know that they switched the invite list just a little bit. So I believe Sammy posted on Twitter he will not be racing in the Viroc. Last year, when they redid the qualifications to make the Viroc, one of them was eliminating the provisional for past champions beyond a five-year period of time. Okay. Sammy has not That's won. That's where I was has, like, okay. 2009 was his last. He has not won a Chili Bowl within the time frame now allotted to make the Viroc. There's a, there's a number of other qualifications. The top three within um, night. within um, the final night. Um, and, and prelim night winners. Prelim the night winners. Years. And uh, he's been a little short of that. Yeah. So Sammy is not in the Viroc, and that did cause a little controversy this and week. And the million-dollar question remains, as he's not getting any younger, will the most awesome driver that ever left this building with multiple drillers ever be able to obtain another one? You know, uh, amazing that he is still so ultra-competitive at his age, but you're starting to see it's just getting more and more difficult. The crop of talent gets bigger and younger every single year in this building. This was something Chris and I discussed before going on the air today. You've got some big guns who are coming back to contest this to the point where it's attracted Chase Elliott mm -hmm. to come run this race. And then just the long list from there of people that just want to dabble their feet once a year. And before we kick off this hot lap session, I, I love numbers and I love stats. Okay. And Caleb, this blew my mind when I saw this coming to the Chili Bowl, that 32 of last year's prelim A-Main starters are not here. So there wow. are a lot of spots up for grabs in prelim A-Main nights and shots at, you know, lock, either locking into an A-Main on Saturday or, or getting pretty high up in a B or C. So that number was staggering, even with the 307 entries, which isn't too far off from where we were last year. I think we were like 350, maybe 360. So despite the pandemic and all that, I mean, still 32 of last year's prelim night a main starters not in attendance. We could go, wow. and we probably will touch on this at some point in time, about some of the iconic cars and car yeah. owners that have not made this show this year. The Wilkie car is not here. Um, the 47 cars are not, the Bondio cars are not here. It's incredible how strange this Chili Bowl is going to be with lower capacity in the stands, some very familiar names not here. And Could after be the year we've had, why should it not be this way, right? right hey, yeah. you know that guy. That is Dylan Welch, 
My, uh, I've been carpooling him this week since we got to Tulsa yesterday. Good buddy of mine. Been We used so, to race quarter midgets together, and then he did the pavement route. I did micros, and it's good to see the world's fastest announcer back at the Chili Bowl. Made the A-Main here in 2016 and was, has been I'll, close ever since. I was going to make mention, fascinating as uh, he's very talented in the media with the microphone, but it's just as fun to watch behind the wheel. He's quite the wheel man, and he proved that last year. Still holds the track record at Kokomo Speedway, so that's no slouch. Somebody's engine has got a bad misfire to the point where it's rattling the booth as you're looking at Avery Goodman 73. The 72K, that's Chad Turner. 79K being driven by Kyle Simon. Chase Johnson there in the 72 even wrote, uh, took over Instagram yesterday and did about a thousand interviews for Flow Racing. And there's Tyler Thomas in the 91 familiar BT machine entry. Or excuse me, no, that is not Tyler Thomas. I get so used to that now. It is. Chris Andrews actually yeah. in that car. If you look at Johnson going up and slapping the wall. And Welch out there racing with the 73 of Brody Fusen. We'll get a yellow out on the track. One, somebody's motor literally detonating each time yeah. they came by the booth. And, and I wondered if it was Avery Goodman because there was a lot of smoke coming from around the header area those last couple of laps. So it'll be interesting to see if they'll be able to diagnose. Luckily, once again, these are all Tuesday night prelim drivers, so you will have time to make adjustments, make some changes. Right now, just kind of shaking the car down and seeing what you got for tomorrow. If something terrible happens, you got 24 hours. Right. Now, not everybody comes with a spare spare engine. A lot of people have spare parts, so you'll be able to find that. But uh, the two things that are terminal in a lot of cases for some of the not massive teams are going to be engine and frame. So we'll see how yep. it uh, ends up sequencing out. Is let's the fire Rocket it. Man, Ryan Newman. How about that? Making his return once again. Last year was his first time in a midget at the Chili Bowl and I believe like 12 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, first time I'd watched the Daytona 500 in a long time. Hey, dip. say what you will. Roundy round cars with fenders aren't my deal, but watch the Daytona 500. I'm just thankful we have Ryan Newman. Yeah. That was scary. We talked to him in the airport when we landed yesterday and he said, He's got his helmet from that crash, and it has compressed and absolutely just cracked right down the chin. I mean, it is incredible the story he talked about his helmet with Ryan Newman, and he says if it wasn't for that helmet, and he, I think he wears a Stilo, you know, he said that it, it, he wouldn't be here. Yep. So a pretty incredible story, but, yeah, thankful to have Ryan and thankful to see him back with the Clawson Marshall team in that Driven to Save Lives piece. Did a decent job last year. But I know he definitely was a little bit disappointed with, uh, I believe he won the E-Main. And then that was Which about really, it. Which really, I mean, honestly. Yeah. E-Main, e uh, we just mentioned where we started in the morning of championship day. And for him to come in this building, uh, a lot of people forget his past USAC uh, days. Yep. And he was quite the open wheel wheel man. But a hiatus for so long and then to jump back into the cockpit last year here for the first time at the Chili Bowl. He knows racing with the best of the best in the biggest event. He fared quite well, I thought. This practice session is loaded, by the way. You saw Sammy Swindell. There he is in the one. Behind him, the three of Jake Newman. That's a guy to watch. Also, you've got multiple time and defending World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Car Champion Brad Sweet out there. Brandon Walty in the 3W. There's Ryan Newman, the 0 0. There's Sweet in the yellow and blue car. Also on the track, Jeff Sessoms in the 2ND. And Tanner Carrick in that 98K back with the Keith Coons Motorsports camp after yeah. running part time with Petrie. So he'll be one to watch as well. This, Yeah, this group, this is the tail end of Tuesday night slash the start of the Wednesday cars. All kinds of talent out there for this one. Ryan.
starter, Sarf is the multicolored 0, zero car. As yellow lights are on, checkered flag is out, and session 12 is finished off. So now we'll be firmly into Wednesday night competitors, or at least Wednesday night as it stands right now, competitors. Good Again, for those of you yeah. just tuning in, transponder loop's not up, so we don't have lap times. Apologize, nothing we can do with that. We can grab the old stopwatch and do that method, but won't exactly be efficient. So we don't have lap times to give to you guys. Our apologies on that. The uh, transponder loop in the uh, building is not up and gone, and they're not sitting there strapping transponders onto them and peeling them off. Yep. Well, we are somewhere between... Uh, this racetrack is nowhere ne near needing assistance right now i do i don't forecast them to mess with it still yet for a good while um as you can tell it's still not yet very wide so just shake down though you know it's is the the veteran guys of the building are is my car running is everything working yes is it rotating where i need it to and want it to okay cool we'll adjust the track conditions as we go right Right. Especially as you get later on in the week. Now, I remember how I liked fun facts. Here's another one for you. I'm just spewing them out today. Oh. 62 total rookies out of 307 entries. That's pretty intense. 62. Now, they may which, not be midget racing rookies, but they are Chili Bowl rookies. Which, which means a strong contingent, a good percentage of those rookies have enough talent to make some news and some waves here this week for, for sure. sure and that's especially, a coveted award is the rookie of the year here indeed uh, and especially with the vacancies you just spoke of of the uh talent that's not in the building that was here last year sure uh you're gonna see one of those named rookies here is i think uh what you saw earlier was not what you saw earlier i saw a 9e car rolling down the ramp i did so, too hey, uh, uh, so boys check and it girls out. if you've been waiting you see uh, that guy right in front of us there? You see what's behind him? See that dollar bill still stuck in the fence, Caleb? <laughs> <laughs> that is the dollar bill that you owed to Clinton Boyles. I'm sure we'll tell that story at some point in time. But There's the 90 of Chase Elliott. Yeah, that's right. Cup Series champion was on the Loud Pedal podcast on Flow this week with Kyle Larson. Everyone just raving about his debut at Millbridge Speedway, what was it, a month ago in the Carolina Midget Showdown. was able to keep pace. I think got a third and a fourth place yeah, finish. Yeah, amazing. His onboard camera from that, he looked like he'd been doing this for 10 years. So we'll, we'll editorialize here for a second. What are you guys' expectations for Chase Elliott this week? Or do you have any? I, I was just thinking that. I'll let you go first because I'm kind of I, I've spent a it. lot of time thinking about it, and, and – you know, after listening to the words he had to say in the podcast about not putting expectations on himself, he's Chase Elliott. He's a race car driver. He wants to figure this out as quickly as possible. I did see him on the Chili Bowl pool. He is a pickable. I think he's a group five or six pick. Definitely pickable. Man. But I'll tell you what. If he keeps his car clean, mm -hmm. doesn't get into any issues, I think he can sneak into the back of his prelim night a -mate. Um, okay. Ha ha I really do. Okay. Half of the success of this is the format and uh, finding the proper balance of avoiding the mess yep. throughout your heats and your qualifications and passing as many cars as you can. That always presents a problem with so many at this place. Um, and that's what makes it so terribly entertaining. We know cup champion – uh, first of all, really cool. Kind of puts a, a, a cherry on the top of this whole event. First time that I can recall that a defending Cup Series champion comes in and uh, makes his first bid at the Chili Bowl. So what do I expect? I expect that he expects what this place has to lend. And uh, everyone has told him, and he knows full well, uh, the gremlins abound that can jump up and get you when you're trying to accumulate points throughout your heat and your qualifying. But he is a racer, and a racer is a racer. And when you get honed in and your car feels right and you're in that groove, you got a little karma and mojo in your pocket, and uh, you feel like you're avoiding messes good here and there, he should fare quite well. And but he's I got wouldn't a good expect, guy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I got to see his uh, qualifying night to know if I think that he would have a shot to make the show. I think it's, that at this point is a long shot. But, man, sure. we've seen crazier things happen in this building. It's going to start with the draw. 
yeah. he's going to have to draw himself into a good position in his heat race in a on a track that's passable and with guys in front of them that are going to be passable. It'll all start from there and we'll see. This could be one of those deals we've seen we've seen guys who have accomplished things at his level. Maybe not cup champions, but guys who have won cup races mired in O-Mains on Saturday morning. We've also seen them starting up front towards the A-Main of the Chili Bowl. Now in the rookie year, who knows? But I think you've got to set a really low floor and a really high ceiling. Mm -hmm. He's Chase Elliott, guys. He's got talent. We know that. The question is, how's luck going to break for him? And how is he going to adapt to this form of racing and reading this racetrack? Well, you know he's here to have fun, first sure. and foremost. This is something just to dabble in. And uh, it takes a free mind and a free spirit through a driver's eyes to approach this event if you want success. Um, if you're an antsy kind of guy and you come up twisted in your head and you cinch in, you get down to the bottom of the ramp and you take your first green flag, man, the mess is going to happen right in your lap. So uh, I think his demeanors will. His approach that it's just going to be a recreational thing that let's give it a whirl. That's the right mindset to have to have to, to have success. Yeah. So you're looking at AJ Hopkins' 7R. Running for his old quarter midget pal, Taylor Courtney and Moonshine Motorsports there out of and Kevin Ramey out of Texas. Pretty cool that you get to pair up with one of your old racing pals to go run the chili bowl. Fun story here, Taylor Reamer. Competitive yeah. cheerleader. Yeah, how about that? For the University of Oklahoma. Boomer Sooner. One of the fastest drivers in the history of the Port City Raceway. Drivers, gender, gender non-specific on that one. She had track records and wins out the wazoo back in the day and finally gets back into racing. So that'll be a fun story to follow again. These are Wednesday cars as you're getting a look at the 14. That driver, it's Cameron Hagen. We saw one pull off getting pushed back up the ramp, the AW Troy Rutherford, so issues with the Rutherford machine. Chris, that young man we just got a shot of, Cameron Hagen, is uh, one of my most interesting memories ever as a pit reporter. We were at the old Lucas Oil Speedway and he hopped a wheel coming off of turn four, flipped all the way down the front straightaway. I'm standing down in turn one and he ends up, oh, uh, maybe 20 yards from where I'm standing. Oh boy. He gets out of the car and he starts unbuckling his helmet and the EMTs come and they check him out. And obviously I'm right there so I don't have to walk very far. I make sure the EMTs free him up. He unbuckles his helmet. He takes off his, uh, takes off his helmet. And Cameron, as you can tell folks, is a great big old boy. He's about six foot three and tough break for him as it looks like he did not practice, did he? He was going out and then hit the ramp, did yeah. he not? He came out and they just pushed him back up toward the ramp. So again, a lot of some stories to follow, some issues for some early competitors here. So Cameron uh, gets out and he takes his uh, helmet off, gets his chin strap unbuckled. Big boy puts his arm around me. We start talking and they throw it down to me. And uh, I feel him start getting heavier and heavier and heavier until his entire weight's all like, he faded out right in the middle oh, of the wow. interview, and I, I'm like, oh, I think uh, actually we're going to step back here and let the guys look him over. Uh, just uh, had his bell rung, and it kind of hit him about wow. two or three minutes later. So he'll Such go. a super kid. His, uh, his family, uh, a huge congregation here in Tulsa. Wonderful, wonderful people, and this building means a whole lot to them. And uh, great, wonderful Christian people. I hate to see their Chili Bowl start the way it has as uh, he has hit the ramp. This is not the part of the day that you want to hit the ramp going up without taking a green flag lap. But part of the week, I mean. He does have two days better to figure it out. Better now yeah. than on your, pre on your night. Correct. Can't win hot laps. I know guys who have tried. Oh, there are those out there, yes. <laughs> there are a good number of those in this field that have uh, tried. Jake Neal is the 8K. I had a t-shirt one time that said I won hot laps. <laughs> True story, I did once. Um, 
Oh, we'll share that later. Nobody's interested in my racing career. Okay. The, uh, the four, Parker Price Miller out on the raceway. There was a transponder malfunction, and apparently I won sprint car hot laps at Grays Harbor Raceway when I was nice. announcing this gadget. Say again. There was a transponder malfunction, and apparently I won hot laps at Grays Harbor Raceway in the sprint car division when uh. I was announcing this gadget. <laughs> oh, I have the screen grab from it so I can show people that I'm talented enough to announce and win sprint car hot laps at the same time. Oh, There's my Parker gosh. Price. Good Caleb. to see him back at the Chili Bowl. Sprint car competitor across All-Star and World of Outlaw series. Walked into my boss's office, Mr. Beitler, a little bit later. and was like, hey, Steve, look how good I am. <laughs> Green flag out on this practice session. This is session number 13. There's PPM, the law firm. Down the back straight away. Parker, back here at uh, Chili Bowl this year, he's usually off in Australia this time, contesting speed weeks and the post-boxing day events. There's Chase Elliott. Ooh. Maneuverability experience here early as now we go back to AJ Hopkins there. That moonshine machine. And then we go back a little bit farther. There's the 5 0, I believe, of Chase Howard. Correct. Nice little blue groove starting to develop in the racetrack. One of a pile of sevens. I think that's either Sean Jackson or Jason War Jake Warhurst. Robert Dalby's Ford car, one of the terrors of California. Dalby getting some love in the Chili Bowl pools this week. Yo, he certainly has. I think a lot of people are keeping an eye on the Dalby machine, and he brought a couple of cars too as well. There's Chase Elliott exiting the track. Good run for him. You know, it's a shame we don't have those transponders on these race cars for hot laps because I'd be real curious to see just where... We're kind of at that practice session point with 13 just exiting the racetrack that this track is going to be ideal for about your heat race time. You even saw that little bit of the shiny start mm -hmm. go into turn number one, the blue groove or whatever you want to call it, where the track has started to seal over and create a very difference between going in on the top and the bottom. It's been narrow. I mean, there, there's no other way to say it, but we expected that. Gravel um, said on Twitter, hey, it's going to be juiced up. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be thick for a while here during practice. Yeah, and I think that that's just the culmination of knowing that you know you want to set this place up for later. You yeah, know, you're not gonna, this is right. You're no, not trying to the, figure things out right now. It's more yeah. just getting your car right. We're gonna it's have the first of a million laps on this racetrack within yep. the next uh, six days. And you know, back to what we were talking about in relation to a little bit earlier, the maneuverability of the the surface and the dirt of this racetrack, and the guys that have done it so many times over repetition, they've got this thing down so well that they can do what they really want to do to this thing and the question and pretty is, much hit it spot on the question today is time frame right if you keep enough water in it now you only have a limited amount of hours in which to get it re-prepped and re-ready for a race night that's one of the big reasons that they've got it as heavy as it is but the there moment. again uh my point a little earlier when it comes time to hit the reset button and start from scratch and re-prep it uh till it grade it fluff it up run it in get it ready for the first flight of hot laps tonight the first qualifying night i mean even when we're rushed they can flip that in about 30 minutes time typically green flag is out as you look at kaya kalanoli out on the raceway there's taylor reamer referred to taylor a little bit earlier she'll be a fun story to watch this week the quickest chicken chase randall in the 19 Running that Petri machine, and right behind is the 22X of Steven Shevester on the race course, running that topper line. As you can see, the cushion starting to move out just a little bit. Coming through the 12H of David Riquenio. And there's the 10 as we got oh. one around sideways and spun facing the wrong direction. I think we just called it out as Anton Hernandez running the Ripper machine. Good to see Hernandez yeah. picking up a ride late. He was in on this Twitter process. after Christmas, still looking for. You know, a guys, seat. even it, it's always so funny uh, in anticipation with so many cars wanting to get their shakedowns. Uh, you know, really, uh, 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 brotherly agreement. 
you don't really need or want or shouldn't be trading wheels and getting up on the wheel during hot laps but it's always interesting to see there's always that guy yeah. you know and the, and everyone is so anxious and so feisty to uh shake their stuff down get into competition we saw emerson axum out there a former tulsa shootout winner that driller on his shelf yeah you know we referred to hernandez there real quick Hernandez, you said post Christmas. He was post shootout, still looking for still a looking. ride. Yeah, we he was looking last week. Anton Hernandez. Yeah. Um, wow, that young man. He is chock full of talent. Uh, Vado Speedway Park last fall, the Turkey Bowl. Uh, non wing uh, sprint cars out there. Anton, Vado Speedway Park is a great big three eighths of a mile. Good banking, wide, and. Uh, it's got those uh, uke tires on the infield to partition the boys out of the, off off the infield. I love Anton uke tires. Anton took the white flag with the lead, clipped a uke tire right after he took the white flag, overshot the turn. Second place guy got under him. Second place guy overshot turn two. Anton got back under him with the axle dangling, came back around, and. Lip that thing with the front end Jeez. in the air with a broken axle and all to a win. Crazy. Pretty impressive. Santino Ferrucci is supposed to be out in this segment as well. We'll see if we can spot him as we look at Emerson Axel. There is the 2020 Wing Outlaw feature winner for the Tulsa shootout. Chase Randall once again. Yes, caution lights back on. This uh, That's Reimer, it looks like. Stopped up top, turn three and four, and the 22 of Shebester. But yeah, you mentioned Santino Ferrucci, who's about to exit the racetrack now. It's good to see him back. IndyCar veteran who made his debut in a midget here one year ago said he got hooked and immediately worked on a ride for this year and he got hooked up with dave mac motorsports actually came out i believe to creek county speedway a week or two ago and uh, got some testing laps in because he didn't have a lot of experience right. before hot laps last year so got a little more seat time here before this year and uh i think i saw a ferrucci announcement this week that uh, he's going to change course might do some truck racing a little bit this year that's right yeah i know he he wanted to work on some of that too kind of He's a racer, you know, he's a guy uh, who has Formula, you know, two experience and then came to the United States running the IndyCar program, finished fourth at the Indy 500 last year, and uh, now good wants run, to go do some it? truck. Yeah, exactly. He's a gasser, so we'll see what he can do with this midget experience, and last year he was teamed up with Connor Daly, and uh, James Davison was here, so it was kind of cool, you know, that's yep. the thing we talk about the Chili Bowl, the different disciplines. We could talk about sprint car guys and NASCAR guys, but even the open wheel IndyCar veterans want get to get in on this as well. This is Sorry. session 15 and 16 rolling out, by the way, if you're keeping track. Go ahead, Scotty. So no, just such an interesting flair. Um, just a diverse Field, one of the most diverse fields, I would say, in any motorsport event, most likely. Yeah, and then obviously we added this year a Cup Series champion. So this event continues to draw the, the best of the best, no matter what discipline you roll in and uh, on a weekly basis. And uh, it's the place to be as we get the next group rolled out on the racetrack. Once again, 29 total groups as we just completed session 14 and About we will be on through. yep and we will be on the air till noon central time on flow racing on facebook and then we will continue uh, another hour and 7 minutes yep hour and 7 minutes left of this preview so if we don't get to see your car if you're on a friday practice group we apologize but We'll take a break and then come back for night number one of the 2021 Chili Bowl. I think it's really cool, you know, uh, for all the fans that aren't going to be able to be here this year. And, you know, if you normally are on your way to this event, so much anticipation and so much excitement that, uh, you know, hey, they're stuck. They're not going to be able to make it this year. But, man, 90% uh, of uh, anyone – Watching, listening, likely at work right now. My phone blowing up from people Mon just getting to work on the West <laughs> Coast. Monday oh, blues. I get to. I, I can. 
tune in on the app and I can right? watch this. To, yeah, yeah, you can. I so can. Productivity may go down just a little oh, bit this a smidge. week. Well, with only 25% productivity may go down. Oh, yeah, well. With only 25% of the crowd that's going to be here, mm-hmm. 75% of them going to find a way to watch. Oh, for sure. Right. And that uh, to my point, I think uh, just a great opportunity for everyone to get a peek in and um, catch a little bit of the ambiance of this building, what it's like before everything uh, gets gets going. Um for anybody that just waits all year long to get into this building from and, and is so excited for this event to begin, this day is always really cool. Just uh, green flag laps. Again, watching some guys who know full well, I need to be out here just shaking it out, shaking it down, rotate, take mm-hmm. it easy. But then before their session's over, their elbows are flying and the wheels are flying and, and dirt's flying. And uh, it takes about the snap of a finger for the... Um, level of, of excitement to go up in this building at any given point always throughout there, the event there's a young driver a look into him who knows what it's like to be in victory lane at the Tulsa shootout Sean Mahaffey former restricted class champion and another one right here the 71x of Brian Carber we talked a lot about him winning two golden drillers in the micro division two weeks ago now back making his midget debut in a Keith Coons Motorsports you see he's got the give back uh, wrap on the car, winning that race at Millbridge back in November. Decided to take the money instead of the ride, and then due to some generosity out of Pennsylvania and everyone in the micro community, was able to raise the money to also uh, rent the ride there from Keith Coon Motorsports. So, pretty incredible story, and a, and a guy who's well liked in the micro sprint community, and heck of a race car driver as well. So, it'll be one to watch. Uh, see how he does ripping around here in the Expo Center for the first time in a midget. Those golden drillies he picked up uh, just over a week ago. No fluke. No. He held off Christopher Bell for one of them. So. Christopher Bell, Tyler Courtney, yeah. Jason, uh, Jason, Jason McDougal. McDougal. And yeah. there's a shot of a good shot of a guy that uh, stands a real good chance of getting into the uh, Saturday night A main championship. Talk about a guy who had a good week a little over a week ago, yeah. too. Kevin had a great Thomas shootout. Jr. going to be a threat. For sure. And, you know, former. I mean, basically he's won almost everything in sprint cars. He was a runner-up in the USAC championship in 18. That came down to a tie. I mean, he's so, he knows how to get it done. So you, you want to talk about one of the kind of surprising moments to me over the shootout now heading into the Chili Bowl. Scotty, you were talking to, to KT, Kevin Thomas Jr., out in turn number three, and I think we were talking about track condition and stuff like that because he's noted as a pretty good reader of racetracks. Very studious. As he was sitting there, I was struck by how yoked he is. That dude <laughs> spends some gym time. He does. For sure. The trapezoids and all that stuff. He was looking, you know. He not, was a look- very, not a very big fella in stature, but, but he man, is, he's stout. He looks like he could. Coleman, Alabama. Bench press his weight 500 times. And there's Brett a look. Moffitt. Speaking of NASCAR, yeah, Brett Moffitt, who made his shootout debut a week ago. Put one in the qualifier and ran a B main, I believe. So he got pretty close for his first trip and then decided, well, I might as well keep this momentum going and make my midget debut here at the Chili Bowl. And I talked to him, and he just signed a deal to run full-time with Nice Motorsports next year. He's also going to run Xfinity for our motorsports. So a lot of momentum in the Brett Moffitt camp, just another example of NASCAR kind of invading the the dirt scene here in keeping their hand at it. Trey Rutherford, who pulled off uh, earlier, did not make his session, now gets to come out again. You get some forgiveness here. You get one yeah. practice session, whether it's early, late. Try to be with the guys that you're scheduled, but something goes wrong, we'll give you another try. Rutherford, like one of the... Uh, Rutherf- he is a... Uh, not as much in recent years, and especially this year because Southern California didn't run, but uh, Rutherford, you would frequently see him as the top guy at Ventura Raceway mm-hmm. out in SoCal. The, the track right on the beach. So, I uh, good race car driver. Had had the pleasure of being able to stop and view the facility, but I was so pray one day before God and corporate America takes that place away from us to see a green flag lap there. An amazing venue, Chris. That That's sucker, on my bucket list, man. It sits right on the beach. Smell the Un- ocean. Unbelievable. And then when the tide comes in, they. they the track stays just like you prepped it all night long. It just Ooh. stays, keeps feeding the moisture. Yeah. So if everything sequences out right this year, I'll head down and uh, get my second run of the Hangtown 100 at Placerville, and then I'm going to make a little trip. I'm going to go even yep. further south. I'll catch Ventura in Paris at some point. Good. It's going to happen. Yes. I got, I got to see a practice night there. 
not a competition night, but that place is pretty awesome in and of its own right. One of the nicest looking cars every year at the Chili Bowl is the Alex Bowman Racing 55 machines. As you can see, that's Jake Swanson that you just got a shot of in that nice orange and white. It's interesting that Alex isn't running this year, but I know he enjoys being a car owner. Yep. And to have him and uh, Jake Swanson this year and CJ Leary, who's back once again, he's got a couple of hot rods that can certainly make the show. Flying under the radar, mm -hmm. too. I mean, you think of the Platinum 3 and Bell Larson and Abreu, but if somebody was to jump up and make something happen outside of that group and end up in victory lane, they go, where'd that guy come from? Jake Swanson in that race car could be one of those guys. Oh, for sure. He's that talented. That equipment is that good. And the fact that Alex tabbed him to drive that car just speaks volumes of the talent that Jake has. And so he'll be one to watch as another one off in the work area, the 70. Kate Cowles. Cowles, who had a big flip at Tulsa shootout in his micro, is a uh, Chili Bowl practice day not starting out so good. But again, he's not scheduled to run until Wednesday right. night. I was going to say, get you know, don't you know start to hit the panic button just yet if you have issues because you've got now till Wednesday and the farther we go it'll be Thursday drivers and Friday drivers there's another one we see on the racetrack worth mentioning too and he'll be I believe in the second group Travis Berryhill is another guy that's had a lot of success in this building in particular Burial's the guy that we saw the close-up of sitting in the car with the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be in a 75 car to see him out there. It's a surprising amount of guys uh, having troubles hitting a ramp thus far. We're only about halfway through, and uh, we can count probably seven or eight that have made that trip. Yep. Could we not? Just about, yeah. It's been interesting to see those that have had some issues, you know, as big as Zach Dom had issues. Now, he did get back out on the racetrack because there's a look at the 75 of Travis Berryhill. Once again, 28, 20, 29 total sessions. Is Mike Hess is back on the racetrack. Mike, Mike's I sneaking wonder. in an extra little <laughs> session there. He looked. Did he? Quite did feisty. he motion and say, "Hey, I think I had a little bit of an issue. I need to try this again." Maybe so. He looked pretty feisty in his first one. He uh, might have. Uh, maybe, you know, he's got a little pull. Maybe he <laughs> called officials to the uh, yeah. outlaw technical trailer. Man, if if you've never gotten an opportunity to meet that man at a World of Outlaw race or any place, Mike Hess, one of the coolest dudes I've ever known, just lost his father. And uh, like most of us do and did, loved his father so very much. And uh, he's doing what his father wanted him to do and just continue forward with the racing career that he's had. And, you know, since he's left the seat of a race car and donned an official's uniform, uh, a lot are quick to forget that he was one hell of a sprint car driver back when he ran uh, frequently and also frequently frequenting midgets uh either or sprints or midgets he was a very very good wheel man midget track record holder at the eldora speedway i don't i think that may have fallen this year but i know that that stood it up didn't until last for a long year. time yep yeah and in what division the midget midget yep really yep. yeah i did so not no, know not a lot of people it. remember what's, that what's darn and what was that at a four crown or don't remember Colby Copeland out there I as well. I know that little tidbit. So what's strange about this is that he's out there at the yeah. moment, and I think this does actually need to be hit on because he was out there at speed making laps, and now he's back on the track. So something odd is happening here with him getting out to this session. He was not scheduled for session 15 or 16. Right. So this is strange. Still talking about Hess? Hess, yeah. Yes. And you did mention Colby Copeland, another one of those Matt Wood drivers. I think they brought eight cars this year, including Casey Kane, as we look at deskins there but yeah those matt wood machines were on fire last year with uh ryan bernal locking in um we had kobe copeland got into the a i think through a b so and then they brought a lot of state that's the been the theme this year are these super teams that we talked about yep there's a new two-car team is the primary driver tristan thomas out of my hometown cedro woolly washington there you go Tristan is uh, Dad JR, crew chief in that one. Nearly picked off a power eye win this year uh -oh. at the I-55 Raceway. Right here in front of us, 44 car. 
So let's get a look. 44 Blake around. Carrier, probably, or Cameron Key. I can't see if there's an S or a C. That is Carrier C. C. There's Carrier, okay. One of the nice things is that officials do legitimately make them put the letters on the car here at right. the Chili Bowl. So if they've got a letter to differentiate, it's got to show. Caught him out of the corner of my eye out of the window of the booth here, and I don't believe he made contact with anyone. Spun out on his own, but I did notice a puff of smoke as he uh, looped around. So, uh, again, gremlins abound for so many getting through these practice sessions already. This is session 15 cars, and again, you're looking at Wednesday performers. Or at least currently scheduled to run Wednesday. There's a lot of jockeying for prelim night position, I guess we could say, before uh, everybody unloaded here at the Chili Bowl. I think Wikipedia, you know, when they released the the prelim nights, I think within 10 minutes there's about 15 drivers that switched and said, I don't want to run this day. And maybe when we get an opportunity, you, you can explain that process a little bit more um, as to how people acquire their qualifying nights. Yeah, we're back under caution again for car another around. spun. 27 car, and then we got another one up there. Oh, boy, the second time for Carrier getting almost, around, and KT almost, was the other car. It's almost yeah. like the officials and uh, crew, crew members at this point of the day are playing whack-a-mole right now. It's <laughs> just, uh, again... Well, you mentioned prelim night, Scotty. You know, a lot of drivers now are, are able to kind of put their input on which night they want to run. So, like I know Dylan was talking about, he always chooses Tuesday. There are guys that always choose Friday. Uh, a lot of it isn't quite a draw or a random um, pick, I guess is what you could say, maybe in years past. You're so, allowed to put a preference of your night right. down on your entry And 90% of the time, you'll get it depending on when you enter. A lot of the guys who pre-enter back in November are able to... Get that. Look at the bend. rear end yeah, of that. Or a he's got a axle. Yeah, but he's got a weeble and a wobble to that car. down on the left rear. The frame's dragging. So, um, time to do a little uh, repair work there. Tough Ooh. break for him again. But you got just, two days. Yeah, three days. I mean, still yet. Practice. You just I, roll down that ramp to shake your car down, and the next thing you know, the workload's right in your lap. There, so, my chili bowl has begun. Here yeah. we go. So things we know. We know Kyle's going to go Tuesday. We know Rico's going to go Wednesday. We know Bell's going to go Thursday. And we know Justin Grant's going to go Friday, right? right? Yep. That's over the last, what, three, four, four years, years now. There's your prelim night winners, right? Yep. And that's how it's been. I'm not saying that's how it's going to continue to be, but that's kind of how it's sequenced out and gone so then far. Then you throw your dark horse in there, so, here or there, like a Cannon McIntosh. Who do you want to race against is kind of what it comes down to on your preference of those uh, three. Well, and it's kind that. of one of those things we were talking to Ryan Newman. You know, he's on Wednesday, and I think Wednesday this year is one of the hardest days. And he said, you know what? If you They're can't beat tough. Him, if you can't beat them on your prelim night, you're not going to beat them on Saturday. Yep. So you might as well run with the best. So, you know, you can have that approach. Say, I don't care, but other drivers seem to care which day they run. or the, Maybe they're superstitious. I'm I mean, a Monday really, person. I don't know. I mean, really, when it all shakes down, it makes no matter which night you go. Uh, in addition to those names you just mentioned, Caleb, <laughs> there's probably another list of 10 to 15 drivers that you could legitimately put really good odds on winning this thing that never have. Maybe even more than that. Yeah. Forty-five J. Sean Deskins is the forty-two of Mahaffey to a stop. Got up a little bit into the fluff. They're not sure Mahaffey made contact with anything, but this uh, hot lap session continues to have problems. There's always one. I feel like, and this might be it. Welcome in again. You're watching practice session coverage on Flow Racing's Facebook. Caleb Hart, Chris Wilner, and Scotty Cook are providing you your audio. Caleb, yes. tell me about. Uh -oh. So you left the beautiful Pacific Northwest yesterday around noon? 9.30. And then you landed here when? 5.30. And then you had time to make a pit stop by the center of the universe. I did. Tell me how that worked out for you. Trippy. Who were you with? <laughs> um, so, my friend and a uh, guy I actually raced with, Ryan Cully and his fiance Ashley, were in town. And uh, we went to dinner. And then we, they're like, have you been to the center of the universe? I'm like, <laughs> the universe doesn't rotate around me to begin with? <laughs> no, no, come does. check this out. So... 
it. We went to the center of the universe, and if you've never been, it's here. It's in downtown Tulsa. Really unique experience. Um, I'll tell you more about it later. We got cars. We got making circles. We're good. Now there's Copeland again. Got the Knox Energy drink colors on that spike here this year. Driver of the 37, Max Adams. And following him into the corner of the 35 of Tyler Robbins. Robbins, a power eye veteran. Finally getting some laps in here is, well, Jake Morgan's 14, having some problems up in the cushion. There's KT in the 47, chasing Deskins around. KT on the bottom there, and finally the checkered flag comes out as we can take one more look there at Mike Hess. So, finally we get this one out of the way, but... Uh, issues plaguing that practice session once again that was practice group number 15 of 29 16 coming up look at that legend walking up the ramp johnny hunter Boyke's finest bless his heart anyways i want to hear the rest of your center of the universe story so when you stand in the center of the universe you have an echo like in your head you can hear an echo coming through that nobody else can hear Wait a minute. So you could be standing three feet away from me, and I could be talking to you just like this, Scotty, and I would hear my voice echoing, and you wouldn't. It's R trippy. And you stand, really? what, on, uh, is there like a marker in the center? There's a marker. Okay. You, you, straddle, um, you, you straddle a seam in the pavement there, mm -hmm. and one foot on each side. It's just, it is the weirdest thing. I think we need to take a field trip, a flow racing field trip. I'm what, game. Uh, we should so, film it. So yeah. what's your um, Newton's theory of uh yeah tell tell us about how you think all that works over there in downtown tulsa <laughs> jimmy miller and myself looked it up and science cannot explain it it's just strange so you know there's I, a lot of things in this world we don't know about and apparently tulsa oklahoma's home to one right, of them. right downtown <laughs> session 16 is now on the track there is the aforementioned jake swanson swanson uh, again, you can't call him a dark horse. He's just not on that list he's, of he's, guys that are going to come win the Chili Bowl that a lot too, of people He's have. too established of a driver to be put on a, a, a dark horse list. Yes. He's a legitimate former Elbows Up winner from us here That's on the right. broadcast. Yeah, he won the Elbows Up award, what was that, la two years ago. With like a 19th to third run through a yep. prelim night feature. It was nuts. Green flag out. shot of the raceway there as you can see in three and four starting to widen out as the 70 gets turned around or turns himself around that's the Kane Cowless machine well Cowles got down from the ramp and back out there so good news yep. and then subsequent bad news for Cade now the folks at home are probably looking at that going that that midget looks interesting you see the body on that yep half tube car right still has down tubes they're just not the full coming off the top of the cage ones unique looking design a lot of unique race cars here, you know, once again, you, as long as you build them to specifics, you know, we've got homemade race cars versus your, you know, house spike and, and, and stealths we've even seen. Spike has a total of nine Chili Bowl wins, but stealth still holds the all-time Chili Bowl record with 10 as a manufacturer. So although we haven't seen stealths in a while, they were big back in the day. They still have 10 Chili Bowls, but spike right on their heels with nine. For a lot of these drivers who only bring this car out for this particular event, so long as you don't tweak it, mangle it, kill it, you could run your 15-year-old stealth for yep. a long, long time. Midgets are very durable race cars. Again, like you say, as long as you don't completely wad them up, uh, they should be uh, good. Hey, I got news. You know how we said we were going to stop at 12 Central Time? Is it already early April Fools? We're just going to go through the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do the whole thing. We're going to do not? the whole practice. Yeah, we'll do the whole practice. Hey, whatever. I want to <laughs> hey, thank you to the guys at yes. Flow for letting us do that. It's it's nice to be able to preview all the cars. So thank you, Flow. We appreciate that. Yeah, we didn't that. want to leave anybody out, and I'm sure everybody at home was chiming in saying they wanted to see all the practice. I mean, so how glad many, that we get yeah. to do it. How, when you made the announcement of uh, when we were actually intending, how many people were like, dang, I, I wish we could see the whole thing. Well, now you can. You gotta love it. So there's a look, Jake Swanson. 
nice Valvoline retro logo. Daniel Robinson is the 57K. Robinson was one of those guys who got the GoFundMe together for Brian Carver. Yep. I think he was the one who started it too as well. As well, so the 60 of Earl McDowell Jr. And white as a caution flag is once again back out on the race course. John Clubundy is the 77. Is Kate Cowles is on the early list for most spinouts. Hey, you know, guys, uh, before I step away here for a second, I want to uh, just say that I just, we just really, really feel our old pal Brian Kopinski and uh, his passing uh, back in late October. And, you know, I was just standing here thinking before I, I made mention that there's no way that between the three of us sitting right here that what we know in our head about this sport even hails in comparison to what that man was an unbelievable amount of midget racing knowledge and we so sorely are going to miss him and we appreciate all the times that we had him in in this booth and uh, we know that his wife and uh, daughter right are going to be making their way into uh, the building i believe they made their way in this afternoon and so uh we just really miss our old buddy brian kapinski we certainly do and we are coming to you from the brian kapinski announcer's booth as we are back underway for this practice session once again looking at the 68s that was scott sherb and then there's your kkm give back winner and two-time tulsa shootout winner here this year brian carver looking back there to travis berry hill Barry here walking down the back straightaway here as the lights from the windows start to gaze in as we near nearing about 11.15 central time as the checkered flag is out for group number 16 in the books of 29. And once again, if you're just tuning in on Flo's Facebook page, we appreciate you and we will be here for the remainder of hot laps here this morning and afternoon. Yeah, Caleb just made a good point. I don't think we saw the 25X of Alex Bright, who was supposed to be in hot lap session 15, so we'll keep an eye on it. Once again, nothing really, hopefully, too alarming, as we've seen some get shuffled down into later groups. Right. You and I are both going through and kind of making marks. Okay, we saw him. We didn't see him. Mm -hmm. You know, he came out. So we'll follow that up. We've got... Uh, so many platforms in which we can follow that up here on Flow Racing. Of course, you're going to want to pay attention to all of the Flow social media accounts as you're watching on Facebook right now, but extremely active on Twitter and on Instagram as well. So we'll throw stuff out there. We'll get it going. And, of course, tonight's broadcast on Flow Racing, 5 o'clock for a green flag on heat races. Yep. Uh, practice should start at 4, and I think we'll have us live at, at least audio from us live at 445. You should have video up and going by 4 as well to catch all the practice sessions for tonight as well. Should. If I'm wrong, I'll correct that in a matter of mere minutes. <laughs> as sessions 17 and 18 make their way down and onto the track. Another stacked couple of groups here oh, as we start yeah. to work toward Thursday. Getting closer to that kind of changeover point. Session 17, going to have one of the Chili Bowl favorites and one of the favorites to win this year. When I say one of, it'll have a couple of guys <laughs> in here that have uh, made some very, very fast laps and shown hey, themselves Speaking of a Chili well. Bowl winner, there's Damian Gardner there as we take a look at the bottom of the ramp, checking things out. As you can see, though, everybody abiding by, we mentioned the mask, Mass being mandatory this year inside the Expo Center, but did a great job for the Tulsa shootout. That's why we're able to have the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. So we appreciate everybody abiding by the rules here. So we've got one on the hook, and I believe that was the callus. Yeah, callus machine from the last session. So some work to do there as groups 17 and 18 will be moved onto the race track for engine yep. heat and then 18 will pull to the infield yep 17 is all wednesday night guys 18 is going to be divided between wednesday and thursday drivers gotcha. so we're hitting to that part of the program colton Cottle in car number 81 rico abreu flashing the rowdy energy drink yeah that was pretty Spot. cool yeah did you see that on instagram i sure did 
I also saw Samantha Bush post a picture from wherever they were running last night going, I don't think we're ever going to get this dirt off of our clothes. <laughs> As uh, I think they've started into, what, cage carts for the youngsters. Yeah, Brexton uh, had a couple wins, I think, already. So he's taken after dad. But, yeah, on, in- on Instagram, you know, Rico was showing off uh, a design scheme. And Kyle Bush said, hey, why don't we make this a reality? So... His people contacted Rico's people, and there you go. Got a rowdy energy machine there in the Keith Coon stable for Rico, and certainly one of the guys that can try to add his name to the three-time winner's club. Rico Abreu, one of the uh, platinum group of drivers, if you're playing the Chili Bowl pool this year, or not. <laughs> I'm, st- I'm still on the fence. You have, If you are going to, I believe you have until hot laps for tonight's prelim nights mm-hmm. that begin at 4 central time, so you still have a little bit, but, man, it's tough. Got to look at uh, Ben Worth down there on the front straightaway. Worth the 2019 Winged Outlaw Tulsa Shootout champion is into the sprint car ranks now out in California. Austin Odell there sitting. Good tight shot of the cockpit. You see a lot of drivers now are able to mount their receiver, their one-way radios, onto their helmet. A little bit more convenient. Back when I would run the micro, we'd have to strap it against our seatbelt or a lot of our suits had a pocket, and sometimes yeah. that'd get real uncomfortable. Oh, oh, goodness. Well, just the pull on the cords that are going in right. there as you're going in. It's I've really had mine unplug a few times. Uh, same here. I unplugged mine a few times. There's J-Mac, Jason McDougal, three-time Tulsa shootout winner in this building in 18, and there's Landon Simon. Good to see Landon back. Landon from the infamous moment up Walking past the ramp with Sammy Swindell. Yep. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that almost. That was one of my favorite uh, racing boys moments of the first couple of years of Chili Bowl that I got to work. Hard to top Trey Marcham last year. Folks that, <laughs> that tuned in was last pretty year, good. That, that video has over 150,000, maybe 200,000 views now. I believe Matt Sherrill yeah, out Matt on Sherrill. the track. There's yeah. It'll be interesting to see if those two end up in the same race or <laughs> I know, I, <laughs> once I, I, again. I should have looked at their prelim night. Well, we'll find I out. Saw, I saw Trey Marchin was out here earlier, and we haven't seen Reitzel yet. So. Morton excavating car of Chance Morton. It's a Thursday night car. Again, they're going numerically through these sessions, so the high number cars that you see out there are going to be Wednesday nighters. The low number cars will be Thursday cars. Example, the 5H of Casey Hicks that's in your screen, that's a Thursday car. There's the 84 flashing into your screen of Giovanni Selzy. Still holds the shootout record for youngest outlaw stock champion at 13 years old a couple of years ago. Now graduating up to midgets, sprint cars, all that good stuff. Hot sauce, one to watch out of the CB Industries team, formerly Tucker Boat, now of Chad Boat Industries, has decided to uh, kind of forgo the pavement stuff that mm-hmm. he had going, and he's going racing. Uh, KCP Racing is fielding him for the whole year this coming season. Yeah, so. he did Good get an Arca guys. West win this year, which was pretty cool to see. As once again, all these cars getting fired off. Two groups will do engine heat. Second group, which will be 18, will pull off first. A little water around the bottom? Yeah, it looks like it, unless that's the shine, but I just have to stand on my chair here in the booth to see. I don't see shine, so that may be a little moisture. Considering how consistent that is around the bottom that we're seeing, yeah, they they came out and put a little stripe down. Everybody kind of running in it at the moment. Nobody's running that low on the straightaways to shine it up, so, yeah. Came out and sprinkled. First time that I recall really even seeing anything done to the track over the course of this practice session. Definitely. Bro, Jeff Stoss of the 91. There's Rico Abreu, the 97. Been worth the five. Referred to him a little bit earlier. Nick Hoffman there in the two. You know, we mentioned Rico. I think he's going to go for a fourth prelim, straight prelim night win. Impressive. So Brody Roa, Roa, excuse me, out of the West Coast, CRA Sprint Cars, also teaming up with Moonshine, Taylor Courtney and Kevin Ramey in that group out of Texas. They've 
upped their game. They have. They're, they're, they've put together some nice cars. And, they're, uh, and Taylor was supposed to run the shootout, obviously twin brother to Sunshine Tyler Courtney, but he, he was on the entry list for one division and missed his heat race, and we texted him, and he said, oh, I'm too busy. He ended up making all of our temperature stickers that everyone is required to have when they walk in this building. You get you take your temperature, and they give you a sticker and uh, for each day, so he's been making those. And also the Chili Bowl program cover. So Taylor's a busy boy, also fielding two race cars here at the Chili Bowl. Very successful printing business he's got going. He certainly does. All right, they're waving the Session 18 cars off. So Session 17 about ready to get started. Live coverage here on Facebook on Flow Racing of your practice day for the 35th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals presented by General Tire. All right, about ready to let them loose. Heck, spectators already here, parked, ready to sit in and watch practice. You know, buy the ticket, get the whole experience, Oh, right? absolutely. And if you're not here, once again, every lap of every prelim night, starting today through Friday right here on Flow Racing and on the app as well. And then we'll take you bright and early on Saturday with the O or P main or wherever we start through the pole shuffle. Until the pole until, shuffle. Yeah, until the pole yep. shuffle. And then uh, we will hand it over to Mav TV and Lucas Oil TV for the pole shuffle, the C, B, and A. Helps 98C is who you're watching on the back straightaway. Oh, around it goes the 50. I believe Caden Cornell is the 50 that we're looking at there. May have been a transfer car from session 16, sliding up to 17, so was unable to make the call. A little bit of smoke there on the left side, not sure where that's coming from. And also a spin for the 97A of Austin O'Dell. You know, looking at some of these paint schemes makes me want to have a car again. <laughs> just so I can design Doesn't it. it. Yeah, yeah, just so I can say. It's incredible, you know, over the years how much designing has be been a big part of the, you know, midget race, midget racing in general, but especially the Chili Bowl is an opportunity yeah. to get creative. You have a very small amount of space to sure. get your sponsors and stuff on there. So how can I get the people recognized? I need to get recognized and still make a sharp and clean-looking car as part of the adventure. Cornell running out of the Dom Motorsports camp. Email back and forth with Zach a little bit this week as uh, he's getting his 5D speed shop up and going. Okay. Diving into the micro ranks as well. So seems to be a common theme amongst midget racers. We look at Geo Selzy back on the loud pedal here for hot lap session number 17. Got a sneak underneath Cornell. They're Colton Cottle in the yellow and red. Or 81. Odell's 97. Look out. <laughs> He knew it, too. You see him pounding his fist on the steering wheel like, dang it, I can't keep making these mistakes. Yeah, it's just a small oops. But like you like we've kind of reiterated, you know, better figure it out now. A lot of drivers, you know, if this is your first or even second time, still figuring out your 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 points of entry to the corner. Where do I need to set it up at? You know, a lot of the good thing about this racetrack here at the Expo Center is the back straightaway has signage and they've got the uh, the. Uh, structure poles of the building so you can almost find an area that that's where i need to set the car around the bottom that's where i need yep. to set the car on the top so yep. some of these mistakes are probably just guys just also figuring things out hey it's starting to get slick so lots you can learn still here in hot laps besides just making sure the hot rod runs you uh just got to look at tyler thomas sitting up in where the work area will be ready to push back onto the track That work area will be a busy place when we get racing here starting tonight. Let's it? look at the BT Machine Inc. 91T. T 
Thomas has been a terror on prelim nights. He has. One of those guys that's always up there threatening. Got his first USAC sprint car win at Kokomo a few years ago, which is pretty cool. Got to shout out my friends at Kokomo Speedway. Selzy and Cottle through your screen. There's Colt running the cushion. Slater held there, and then here's Rico Aper once again. Gonna run the low side of the racetrack. Awfully good is Rico on the top, but boy, when he gets the bottom rolling, that 97 is awfully good. Nick Hoffman's two. Like Terry Maddox is going to throw the checkered flag here for hot lap session number 17 of 29. And collar good. Terry, one of the busiest here in the Expo Center each and every year. I don't, you know, I think we talked about it at the shootout. Bad. I don't think he left the flag stand. No, no, Terry's a grinder. He <laughs> just pushes through. And one of the good guys in all the sport. His body language is the best as we go throughout the course of the week. Some of those frustrations may show, and he certainly is not afraid to show it as we look at our NOS Energy Drink ramp cam. See a lot of the drivers after their hot lap session will come down and take a look at the race surface, especially those running here on Monday. Right as I say that, I get a uh, message. Happy to design and sponsor a design and vinyl if I get another I'm digit. telling you, remember, remember at the shootout, we mentioned all oh, those 600cc mini mods are cool, and then all of a sudden we start getting tweets saying, we'll, we'll fund you. <laughs> Let's do it. There's a good look there at the cushion starting to develop just a little bit. All that clay being kicked up there on the signage. Our speedy cams will be hard at work. Got a lot of them here for you. There's a front straightaway. We have one in turn four. We've got one right here in turn number two. Still not as wide. By <laughs> we we've seen it, Caleb, where that top side where that where the color starts to change is all the way up against that turn yeah. tire pole. Do you look at the way that it's uh, the track is developing here too? It is not clumping and cushioning really at this point. That's loose and marbly, is what Clinton Boyles would say at yes. this point. Yes. You can see it there too. Still loose, kind of blows off a little bit, so no curb. I'll use the terminology fluffy stuff, and it truly, that is fluff it right is. now. Not compacted, just get into it, and, you know, it's going to marble on your tires. Nothing really to grab at this point. Well, I think that's some of the issues we saw with a couple of the cars that have spun in hot laps, you know, just getting up there a little bit too high. There's nothing to grab onto. It's been worth. At least not from that vantage point. You yeah. can see a little accumulation of a ledge from some of the flatter shots that we're getting out of the pit area. So that's the uh, back straightaway cam that's in the infield. You can look, there's a little ledge to get in on, but it's not right. super thick or aggressive like we were seeing a week ago. It'll get bigger for sure as there's Jason McDougal running the Beast 4B and right behind is the 7. Uh, Chance Morn, I mean the 7 MF. 84 out there. One of the holdovers from the last session. Worth down low. That's Morton's 7 MF. Okay. I think the one you saw earlier was the 7 M of Roa. Thomas is 91, chasing around car number 5, Casey Hicks. And Thomas off the pace. I just lost power. We're still under green, and now finally the caution flag waves. That could have been ugly as he just, that thing just laid over there entering turn number one, so not sure what the issue is here. So they're going to go chase some gremlins on the uh, Tyler Thomas car. I didn't see smoke. I don't see fluid, so... I, technically, you'd think 
electrical or you would think or you know honestly and it's happened before you know i talked to tyler courtney about it i think it was last year there was a race where just the way your hands are he accidentally hit the kill switch it happens but looks like he's motioning he wants to get pushed back off so maybe there isn't an issue hmm Let's see if he can get refired here We mentioned Jason McDougal's out there. He was on the wrenches for Kevin Thomas Jr.'s sprint car in the 9K while also running part-time as well. The Thomas car... He's still trying to get pushed, and yeah. I think they're going to push up him up the, the yeah. ramp. Yep. Again, Thomas slated for Wednesday night at this point, so they've got... A little time, 48 hours to diagnose, figure it out, and get things back to perfect running order. We saw Matt Sherrill in that 2D. That team had Dave Darland in their car last year. Darland unable to make the Chili Bowl this year, unfortunately. Breaking his streak of consecutive Chili Bowls attended as you look at Spencer Baston. There's a guy that can certainly make some noise. And just as I say that, gets loose off of turn four, able to save it. Based in a mainstay on the All-Star and World of Outlaw Series Tour this year. Former National Midget Champion as we look back at Fort. And checkered flag is out. Again, transponder loop in the building is not up, so we don't have lap times for you guys. We apologize. That is a building thing. We just don't have it up and going yep. for practice sessions here. And unless we wanted to send Connor up top to go strap all these cars with transponders <laughs> and fire up the big up top computer. Yep. Or get a couple on stopwatches. Take a look at the NOS Energy Drink ramp cam. A couple of times we'll refer to top of the ramp and the quote scales. Well, there's no scales, but yep. that's just where these scales usually are, at least over the course of the shootout. So if we say that... Let it be known, there are no scales. The next group of cars will start rolling out onto the speedway. You know, another car who was supposed to make that and I didn't see was the 1G of Chase Stockin. We'll circle that one. So Stockin unable to make the call for 18. We'll see if he's going to be in one of these later ones as we see KJ Snow out there. He had a good shootout. 1920 is what we're due for. Yep, so we'll... Starting to get to the back portion here of hot laps. Once again, 29 total groups of the 307 entries. And we're going to follow them all. And we are going to follow them all right here on Flow Racing on Facebook. And then we'll take a break and be back for night number one, starting at 5 p.m. Central Time. And we are getting word from our lovely producer that after two more of these groups, we're going to have a little track prep, a little break in the action before we round out hot laps. So I think we're just running a little bit ahead of schedule here. It's 1137 Central Time as these cars on the next two groups of 19 and 20 roll out on the race course. We did see Timez. Now, he did get up and into the wall in his hot lap session. He was all the way back near the beginning of Goodness. the day like session eight yeah yeah so there's so he's a tuesday car right so i bet you you know like we said they're, they're not gonna be real strict here if you have an issue in hot laps i'll let you try to tag the tail of one of these so team is able to get out here in 19 or 20 we'll as see which one as we just saw with troy rutherford rolling yep. back out as well rutherford had problems getting fired getting it going on his team has had some significant front end damage so that was a quick turnaround <laughs> For the RMS guys. Well, they got a good crew up there. They've they got the bodies. They've got the knowledge. And that makes a huge difference. Brock Barrett there. A good shot of his cockpit. He had a good shootout as well. Barrett did. He uh, was sneaking towards making some A-mains. And, and making an A-main at the shootout is something. It is. Sam Haferteep Jr. is the second car in that shot. Hey for Teep, the 15H, your reigning and defending multiple time Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series champion. That's right. See him in the Viroc. That'll be on Tuesday night. The real deal, Andrew Deal. 
if ever there was a nickname that was just really easy to throw on, right? Yeah, yeah. Not too hard to come up with that one. Nope. Although, for me, nicknames should always be earned, not bestowed. I, I definitely right? agree with that. You, yeah. You've got those drivers who try to nickname themselves, and it's like, eh, right. you know, okay. It means more when you earn it. That's right. And those are the ones that stick really well over the years. You have a couple favorites you can think of just over the years? I'm not much of a nickname guy. No? I haven't, I haven't thrown out a whole lot of nicknames over time or done it just because it's not my thing. There's Chase Briscoe, who was... He, he was an earlier scheduled guy. Yeah, he also uh, making a later call. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We saw him before we went on air. He was able to come back out. Not sure if he had a problem. Hmm. Aaron Farney as well. But yeah, back to Briscoe, was able to you know not only have a big season in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, winning nine races and then signing with... Stuart Haas to run a cup car in the 14 in 2021, but also picked up the first of two pre, uh, midget main events at Millbridge at the Carolina Midget Showdown. So was able to knock the rust off quickly. We'll see if Briscoe can make some noise. He's another guy, too, that could easily uh, make himself sure. into a Saturday B, and if not an A main. I'll, I'll say this much for Chase, for everything that went on in his personal world with him and his wife Marissa yeah. this year. It would be nice to see him come out to this show and have some more success, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. That story of him hitting victory lane right after what happened to the two of them was touching even for a guy with a heart made of coal like mine. <laughs> no, it was a magical moment. I think one of the top top five moments of the year for, definitely for oh, sure for sure and Good. she is such uh, i love marissa and, and and i can't wait to see her out here and certainly you know we we're all thinking of them but man you know like you said it would be so cool if you could come out here yeah good people yeah you know and his micro he's another one of those guys that bought a micro to kind of join the fray and yep he put dylan welch in it back uh, at the kcam get back classic and dylan went from the b to the a started dead last and finished sixth that's a good run. Yeah, and that micro had only been on track about twice. So keep an eye out on didn't, that Frisco micro yeah, program. Didn't take long to get those cobwebs shook out, did it? Certainly not. I heard rumors Dylan may run it a handful of times more this year. So You've got an inside source there. Oh, yeah. Or two. Well, if Dylan's going to do it, I need to get to my car owner and tell him to move my cars from Indiana back down to North Carolina. Yes. Maybe we can get a three-car team going. I don't know. I, I, a kid can dream. I endorse this. When you're not busy flying all over the country working for MRN. Right. I, can do I can find some weekends easily. All right. Convincing the girlfriend, that's another, but that's a, that's a long story. What do we say about girls that... that want you to go racing and go with you. Yep, put a ring on it. They get bigger diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's Garrett Smithley. Interesting story. Uh, obviously, was originally not scheduled to run that 17D. That was supposed to be Cody Ware, but a last minute, actually last week, uh, was decided that he wasn't going to run. So Garrett Smithley out of the Rick Ware Racing Stable in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and Cup Series got the call and talked to Garrett at the airport there in Charlotte. And he said, man... I ran about 150 laps on iRacing, and that's all I've got. So hopefully they can get this machine fired up, because I'd love to see Garrett, who's big time on iRacing and Twitch and streaming. He's a definite fun follow. See if he can get, looks like he's going to go back up the ramp. So maybe he'll try to come back later in hot lap session. But he's a guy that I really want to see, because he's one of those quick adapters, too, that can translate a sim experience into on-track racing. Again, you get some forgiveness. If you don't make your session you're scheduled for, had a problem, yep. whatever, you're allowed to come back out and yep. take another shot. We've already seen that. Chase McIntosh, the 08J. Good-looking midget there. Yeah. One of the Dave Mack cars. Jace cruising around the top side of three and four and coming into one and two. That 15 of Carson Garrett. Going with the black and white design this year. There's the turn two shot. Yeah, it's hard to tell there, you know, cushion wise, if it's just kind of blown over or if there's something to grab on. But you said right here in turn three and four, you can see it up against the wall. Starting to develop there just a little bit as we get 19 and 20 engine heat just about wrapped up, and they'll pull group 20 off the racetrack. There's Brady Bacon, as well as Ryan Bickett. 
No gas. Gas monkey. <laughs> Justin Dickerson's 21. Austin Proc, NHRA. There's another discipline. Got himself a win last year on the NHRA Top Fuel Tour. So Austin, a former, he ran quarter midgets with me back in the day. His dad, Jimmy, famous tuner there in the NHRA division. So, like, good to see him. And I don't know if Ron Caps is out there watching. He runs in our Monday night iRacing league uh, for fun, but certainly a guy we'd love to see back at the Chili Bowl. I think he tweeted a video of himself upside down a number of years ago. So we'll see if we can convince him to come back. But so far, no flips no. in practice. No. Let, let's don't, see, don't jinx it. Die. I think I just did, right? I, <laughs> no take backs on that? No. Sam Hayfordeep Jr., we mentioned him. Again, the official keeper of the flip count is Tony Bachhoven, and Tony's en route to the to the building. Yep, he actually Apparently tweeted Apparently he's watching. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Tony. We appreciate it. Can't wait it. to see you, bud. We're deferring to you on all things flip count. Right, right. Luckily, he won't have any catching up to do. We had 83 at the shootout. That's right. Yeah. I did see the 17D of Smithley trying to get fired back off. Not sure if he did or not. Nope, he's back in the infield. Once again, the second group, the session 20, will... Good looking ride yeah. for Tanner Berry Hill. Yeah, that That's is a beautiful sharp. machine. We refer to the shootout a lot. You watch that all here on Flow Sports and be up in the archives for you to check out once again as... Troy Rutherford, this is like the third or fourth time we've seen him. Well, he's trying. He's efforting. Tulsa Shootout happens New Year's weekend every year, and uh, make your plans already a year in advance to watch it. We did over 2,900 laps yeah. of micro action on that. 46 hours of airtime just last week alone as we're green on hot lap session 19. There's Andrew Deal in the 15D underneath Rutherford. As we look toward turn number one, caution flag is out. We've got one spun around in th turn number three. We'll get the glasses on it. And that is Aaron Farney. Get a really good look from that angle at the coilover suspension on the front of most of these midgets. Yep. Coil front torsion back is the standard configuration for a lot of cars. We've seen some variations. Beasts were four corners of torsion for a while. I don't know if they've made a change on that. We'll get a look once we see some of the beast cars that come out a little bit later. Some of the old, old cars might still be four corners of torsion. Yeah. Or four corners of coil, I should say. There's Chase Briscoe once again. Brisk His colors this year. Oh, and again, one of the cool square tail tank yep. cars. Yeah, you know it's Chili Bowl when you start seeing those come back out. And there's Thomas Mesra, all we mentioned. He had issues in hot lap session number eight. He's back on track here on the loud pedal. Repaired that front end, and Team Mes is going to try to get some laps here. As we look back a little bit further. Here comes Jace McIntosh. And looks like... 15. So Farney, there's Briscoe. Working the bottom side of the racetrack. Not a lot of takers running the cushion because I don't think it's been worked in that much just yet. Everybody ride around the bottom on the burn. There's Andrew Beal. As, I, as I said that, we just got pelted by Timez, who was on the top in turn three and four. There's the pink and blue of Timez. Once again, locked it in the show last year. Had to go home. Couldn't get a ride back. Finally did. Was able to make the A main as the checkered flag is out and the caution flag is out. Man, that is really slicking off the middle it now. It is. Yeah, you could see it there as we were looking at Timez. And to that, um, to that uh, when we take our break, and there is a break imminent at this point, um, when we take our break, it's going to be 15 minutes. Okay. for him to do track work. So uh, we're going to keep it here, uh, although we're just going to put a graphic up and you and I are going to rest our voices for a couple of minutes. We don't need to talk nonstop. <laughs> It'll be a long minutes. week. we got to save our voices. That's right. So um, there will be a 15-minute break in between practice session um, for them to do whatever they want. Heck, maybe some of the officials need to grab lunch at this point in time. We don't know. But that is coming. We do have session 20 to roll out and get done first. 
Actually, that was 20, wasn't that? There are still cars. So this is 20. So that was yeah. 19. Here comes 20. And once 20 is done... And that was Smithley back up the ramp. So he's not even going to make the call for session 20. We'll see if he can get out. Once again, 29 total sessions today. Or this morning and afternoon. And then yep. we'll cover it all for you after the break. And until conclusion of 29. Then it'll be a break until we get Monday night's portion. The Cummins qualifying night here at the... 35th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals on Flow Racing. Again, racing scheduled for 5 p.m. Central. Uh, practice usually begins 4 to 4.10, somewhere in there. Uh, nights beyond this, we're expecting practice 3 to 3.10 and racing to start at 4. Right. So Monday night, a little bit of a lighter night as far as entrance go. So starting a little bit. Yeah. Later and the they day. also wanted to make it an hour later just because of this being hot lap day, too. Well. Yes. Well, more time to rework racetrack and try to get it back into the perfect condition as you look at Brady Bacon, the Broken Arrow Bandit, the Macho Man. Yeah, running the TKS Motorsports machine. He ran with that group in the micros at the shootout. He's taking home drillers for them in micro competition. He has. Ryan Bickett, 17. That's Dickerson's 21, and Noah Gass is 20. High side. There's the Berry Hill 17 car we were talking about. That is just... I love that. Mm, that's clean. There's Austin Prock out of drag racing background. Making his first Chili Bowl appearance. Working the low side, the red 21, Trey Gropp. And floating in behind them amongst other cars. And that'll do it. All right. So session 20 in the books. As they go up the ramp, our NOS Energy Drink ramp cam in position in case anything happens, although no tempers flaring at <laughs> I least. I would hope not during hot laps, at least so otherwise it's going to be a lot, long week. All right, so it is break time. Yep. Uh, they do not have anybody scheduled up, so we are going to take a very quick break here on the Flow Racing Facebook while track maintenance goes on. Be back with you about 15 minutes or so. Caleb Hart, Chris Wilner in with you. Practice session for the 35th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals presented by General Tire on Flow Racing.
Well, welcome back to our morning practice coverage of the 35th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals here on Flow Racing. NOS Energy Drink, our presenting sponsor for the entire week of action. As you look at the NOS Energy Drink ramp cam, my name is Caleb Park. He is Chris Wilner as we get ready for session number 21 going through 29 here on our live free coverage on the Flow Racing Facebook page. Well, we saw a lot of track prep here in those 15 minutes. We saw the tiller out running the top. We saw the water truck putting moisture down. And like Caleb, like we were talking about during the break, you know, now's a good chance for the track prep guys and, and, and gravel to make sure that this racetrack stays where they want it for later in the night. They, it's it, less work for them after we're done with hot laps if they go ahead and work it now. We told you, we, we said the veteran drivers are here to make sure the car runs and all four corners are working right. They're not learning a ton other than, okay, we're fine, right? The younger drivers, the newcomers to this event, yeah, this seat time is super important for them. Every lap they get is one step closer to where they want to be. But for the guys who are gunning for a place in the show for the Golden Driller and stuff like that, you don't need to have a wide, racy, two-groove track at the moment. Get a little juice into it. Keep it moist. Because the problem is, once you're done with the practice session, we're going to have two hours and change to get exactly. it ready for hot laps for tonight's action, which you'll find here on Flow Racing. Racing starts at 5. We'll be on with the pre-race show about quarter till, and you will see live video of the practice session as soon as they hit the track. Probably about 4.05, 4.10 Central, somewhere in there is typical. There's a good shot of the 69 of Stephen Gravy Fairfield, a longtime World of Outlaw Series mechanic, I believe with Jason Sides, and Decided, what the heck? I want to throw my name in the ring as a driver here at the Chili Bowl and got some funding and a ride and got a pretty sporty machine there with Rico down the right side. He would sell a bunch of T-shirts <laughs> if he had them printed. Yeah. I think even Chili Bowl Twitter account tweeted, we got to get gravy to the Chili Bowl. So it was a, definitely a fan favorite pick to get a ride, and he, it'll be fun to watch him. You want a random stat? Yeah. Gravy has made the A main in every World of Outlaw event he's ever entered. Really? How well, many has he entered? Like two out of two. <laughs> Still With, is impressive. I mean, you know, the field was only big enough to right. have the cars that it were, but still. There's a guy right there that everybody had their eye on after last year. Buddy Kofoid, absolutely impressed in his debut, making a B main out of his prelim night, finishing third, getting into the big show and driving up for a solid finish. And there's Logan Seavey. So a couple big heavy hitters here as we approach hot lap session 21 and 22. Once again, both groups will roll out two groups at a time for engine heat, and then one will pull in the infield while one does their hot laps, and then the other will go out. So 21 will be first to hot lap. As we take a look at Buck Walter, I believe that was Steve. It is the multiple-time ARDC midget champion out in the northeast. 410 sprint car competitor as well, and he's won some big shows. So Buck Walter with us in 25B. Try not to confuse him and his brother Tim at all this year. Yeah. Tim's quite the shoe himself. I saw Troy Betts out on the raceway in the 22B, the Betts Garage, Dave Betts owned car. A couple of guys that do a lot for a lot of racers out there, kind of hidden behind the scenes in some ways. Slight issue there for the 61 of Kenny Kolish. Not sure when they're looking at her, that left rear tire. And if you're just joining us here on Flow on Facebook, 29 total hot lap groups. We're working session 21. Every one of the 370, 70, 307 entry, entrants uh, will take laps here in hot laps if they can. And before we get to Monday night's prelim night, and so far, Caleb, I think to summarize the morning and, and early afternoon here in Tulsa, there's been some issues for some guys, especially we saw Timez get in the wall, but he was able to get back out. And then Zach Dom had some issues as well. Yes, the good news for everybody so far that we've made a note of, at least in my records, is that if they had an issue early, they've had a chance to come out and get a couple of laps late. So the uh, staff has been forgiving. Hey, this happened. No, I need to get back out there and get a lap. Okay, come on. Come on in through, get a lap. So if you missed your session, you've been given a little bit of grace one direction or the other. A couple of the ones that did not make it back out were Frank Flood, who looked like he had a motor issue, and Garrett Smithley, who was supposed to be in one of the last sessions before the track prep break. He got rolled back up the ramp. So a couple 
weren't able to make it. But once again, we're working. These guys are running on Thursday. So Correct. this is an opportunity where if something were to happen and go wrong, this is the time to do it because you've got a few days to figure it yep, out. Yep, they're going numerically up the line. So we're into the early to mid portion of the Thursday group of cars. This first group should have car numbers 22 through 39. The next one, 40 through 71. As you look at Chance Crum out of Snohomish, Washington. Homeboy from my backyard running one of the Clawson Marshall cars. Tony, Tony Elliott Foundation car is the ride this year for Chance. 35 machine. Cody Ledger. Car number 26M, Marshall Skinner. The white number 40 is JT Imperial out of Arizona. Should get another good look at Gravy. Driver's taking a second to work some of the moisture into the surface that got put down during the course of time. While we're on break, Logan CV in the Swindell 39. One of the Dave.com entries should be Frankie Garini's 31K. Drivers just running that moisture in here once again with both hot lap groups. Good look at our speedy shot camera here down the front straight. We've got a number of them for you here at the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. We've got one in turn four, turn two down the front straightaway as we look at the infield. Those are the drivers stacked up for uh, session 22 that's coming out here in just a second. Again, we will not have a transponder loop up for you. It is not up and going in the building yet, and they are not strapping transponders to the car up at the top of the ramp. Okay, so we understand hot laps are going to be at 5 tonight, and we'll race about 6, so okay. we're pushing things even further deep into the day. So, if But you like you mentioned, too, you know, Monday doesn't have the most entries of every other night, so we can afford to do that. And also with hot laps, gives you know, our crews extra time after, you know, 29 groups and all 307 competitors on this racetrack. So, yes, hot laps at 5, and then we will race at 6 central time here tonight on Cummins qualifying night. We'll have video for you as soon as the first car is on the track for hot laps. And then pre-race show starts at about quarter tell here on Flow Racing. Catch every lap of every prelim night live here on Flow. So as you see, they've run the group two cars out or the session 22 cars into the infield. And just waiting on word to let them loose for hot lapping. And the green flag is out. There is the 37W of Zeb Wise. Rookie of the year and the all-star circuit of champions this past season. Now running for Matt Wood's operation here at the Chili Bowl. There's the 37. Driver from an earlier session that didn't make it out there. Played on the visor. Buck Walters 25. The familiar black, red, and white elite chassis car. And then another 25 entry. I believe that's Courtney Crone. Yeah, this is the point, you know, just after a track rep, it's going to still be pretty breezy, so you'll see some cars pushing the front end, so you'll see the drivers cranking it to the left. But as long as you get that race car set, like we were watching the 35. Turn number three. So Gar yeah, Garini went around first and foremost. That's Seavey who came in late and in the 55. Is that 55 D? It's Drake once again. So Nick Drake coming back out. So yeah, like you mentioned, interesting. We have seen Nick Drake out for hot laps. So 
the only other explanation sometimes too is if drivers have a second car entered as a backup you can't hot lap that okay so i'm not sure if nick does but that could also be an explanation but otherwise you know the track crew pretty forgiving if you claim that you've had an issue as long as it's <laughs> i guess they deem worthy enough you can get back out you've seen it happen in the past you're gonna have to prove it right in some exactly. form or fashion exactly. especially with all the other driver eyeballs that are on this yeah right they're gonna the, the burden of proof is gonna be on you yep so they'll get this cleaned up a checkered flag did fall on that hot lap session so it was good to see some of those cars get some solid laps like zeb wise and you know logan cv unfortunate there at the end but he'll be one to watch you know last year was able to make the show in his first time with the swindell operation and was able to drive to the front you know solid surprisingly finish. enough and, and again there's been some controversy over this this week as we were looking over the viroc entry list is that the kevin swindell entry with logan also not in there at the time so yeah interesting deal hey welcome in to the broadcast yo yo homie what's up <laughs> what's happening how are you guys we're good dylan welch yeah fresh after that session number 11 hot lap group bud how'd it go for you yeah it was good it was um it, you know it's it, it's always a little bit of a you never really know what kind of track you're gonna get you never really know who's all gonna be in your session so you try not to put too much stock i think in your monday practice a lot of times but uh, for what it's worth, you know, I felt good. I think, you know, all of our cars that have been out so far have, have looked really solid. So um, see what see what Chris can do tonight. And then uh, obviously I go tomorrow and see what we can do there. Back again with Chad Boat Industries. Talk about the lineup that you guys have. You know, obviously a lot of returners with Gio and Aaron Reitzel. You guys got a heavy stable here this year again. Yeah, it's it's a, a great group, obviously, and everybody that, that uh, they ran last year. So Everybody's got a you know year's worth of experience in this building and in, in their respective cars, which um, you know I think obviously always helps. And and you know Chad too has had a, a full year of being just an owner slash crew chief, and um, you know I think has learned some things kind of on the uh, the national side. Obviously winning the championship with Chris, so um, all the cars feel really good and excited to excited to have another chance to compete in this building. On the driver side of the roster, are you guys sharing notes? Um, y yes and no. I don't really even know if you call it sharing notes, but. You certainly, you know, ask the guy that, you know, went out after you or went out before you, you know, what he thought and how the track was and how his car was and everything, because all the cars are, are pretty similar. So, um, you know, just having, honestly, just having other guys to watch that, you know, have pretty much the same setup as you do goes a long way just to, um, you know, just when you're kind of paying attention and knowing who to watch today. You say pretty similar. We talk in subtle differences in like shock valving, but is it all same brand and stuff going car to car to car? Yeah, all of our stuff is, is pretty much the same from car to car. You know, each guy may have a, a different preference on, on little things here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same stuff. Well, we'll get session number 22 up and going as you get a look at Buddy Kofoy down the front straightaway. Caution quickly out and wrong direction once again for one of the drivers sitting there at the bottom of turn number one yeah we mentioned how impressive buddy kofoid was last year making his rookie debut putting it in the show both prelim night and saturday night there's tyler thomas back out on the track he was another one that had some issues wasn't able to fire and stopped again sean quinn was car spun out in corner number one so again we've seen this we've hit on it if you've had some problems they're giving you some forgiveness this year and hey come on out take another run at it but the uh, gremlins continue on the bt machine number 91 for tyler thomas and same story as before no fluid no smoke and th that almost makes it more frustrating <laughs> yeah. right. you can't you can't figure out what the problem is you know it fires and runs and then it looks like it just dies you know it, it turns over there and looks like it wants to start again but that, that sometimes makes it even harder to diagnose exactly what the problem is. Electrical gremlins are, are a thing, and having an electrician on your crew might be a good idea as far as some of these race cars go. But, hey, this is the day you want them to happen. You know, you, ne you never obviously want it to happen, but it's it's better that it happens now than, uh, you know, in Tyler's case on his on his Wednesday prelim and hot lap. So at least, at least gives him a little time to try and diagnose exactly what the issue is, but it's obviously something that's been... Uh, recurrent because he's this is probably what the third or fourth time he's been out and stopped and hasn't made any laps we were talking about the chili bowl pool and i know you've been a veteran of that you've been in the money and you've been almost dead last yeah, so last how do you year. feel about yours this year oh man i i feel okay but you know i say that and 
and I'm sure I, w I won't do very well. But yeah, I, I love doing the pool. You know, it's a fun way to kind of, um, you know, keep tabs on, on some of the guys you're maybe not as familiar with that we don't get to see race very often. And um, that's where you make, you know, those group five, six, seven picks are where you make up all your all your points. So here's a guy, too, that I know a lot of <laughs> yeah. people are excited about and watching. He's, he's kind of had to really weld himself there and down in the sea <laughs> gravy. If I was participating in the pool, I would have definitely taken him with my group seven selection. Yeah. Actually, I think he was in the wild cards, wasn't he? I think he was, yeah, yeah. that large. The 57 out there, driver from a previous or former session, amongst others. Get a look at Sean Quinn's 26, who was turned around. Joe Walker's 51. There's Chance Chrome again in the Tony Elliott Foundation, number 47. Follow him into the corner. Buddy Cope Floyd in the 67. A couple of guys who have both uh, driven for Doug Roots up in the Pacific Northwest. Shout out Doug, who's watching in from beautiful British Columbia. Gravy in the 69. Oh, look out. <laughs> Gravy got slid. Yeah. Gravy, that's going to happen a lot, bud. Get back up on the wheel. And checker flag from Terry Maddox is out on hot lap session number 22. Dylan, did you see Gravy's hand positioning in there? It uh, almost I, looked I like not. he was at 11 and 1. Oh yeah, he's got it. He's got the uh, the driver's ed wheel going on there. <laughs> <laughs> you remember your first chili bowl? I do. How yeah. nerve wracking was it to take the track for the first time? If you're a guy like Gravy or, or a lot of these 62 rookies we have in the field this year. Well, there's the guy that crew chief my first uh, my <laughs> first chili bowl car, Big Al, right there. But uh, <laughs> who's working with Joe B. Miller now? But yeah, I mean it's. Uh, it's one of those i mean and, and honestly i still get the the same butterflies every year you know it's just one of those events that um, y you are very very well aware of the the aura and everything and the pressure that comes with racing in, in this building in this race so um i'm sure you know in gravy's you know case i'm sure you know he wants to do well but he's not expecting to go out and set the world on fire but but regardless you know you, you still want to um you know you don't want to go out here and embarrass yourself so um, it's one of those events that, you know, just it has that caliber of, of pressure and expectation that you put on yourself that, um, you know, even for me, nine, nine years after the first one I ran, you know, it's still, um, you know, I'm anxious for my prelim night tomorrow. You know, I just want to want to get out there and, and get it over with and and see where we stack up on Saturday. We touched on this a little bit earlier and want to get your opinion on it. We talked about expectations for a guy coming in. Chase Elliott. Sure. What do you think? I, uh, do you have an expectation of him? I guess that's the first question. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a you know a main or a you know specific race that you expect him to be in or that I would expect him to be in. But look, I, I watched him you know at Millbridge a couple months ago and thought he looked great, and then watched him again this morning and thought he looked even better. I mean, even more comfortable. You know, and the thing that the thing that impresses me about him is that obviously we know he's a great race car driver, but. This is so different, obviously, than what he's used to. And there's so many different little nuances that you have to learn and understand that really can only come with, with repetition, with mm -hmm. race laps. Mm -hmm. And the thing that impresses me about Chase is that you watch him you watch him adjust and make adjustments on the fly that a guy who's only made two midget starts normally is not making. Right? Mm -hmm. he, just, he just understands it, it seems. Um, you know, understands how to get the car to go where he wants to go, do what it wants to do. Um, which is something that you really can't teach. So I think it speaks to his, his abilities as a race car driver that he has adapted as quickly as he has, and he doesn't look out of control, and he looks very on top of the race car. One of the things that's gone on said in this conversation is how, as far as the disciplines go, a open midget is a hard car to drive to begin with, and the Chili Bowl, the Expo Raceway surface, is a tricky place to run, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, this, you know, I mean, we don't have to sit up here and tell anybody that's watching this that, you know, you're, you're jumping into the deep end here, you know, head first by making your second midget start at the Chili Bowl. You know, I mean, he, he by all means has, uh, has the deck stacked against him. But again, I think that, you know, obviously his prelim night hasn't happened yet, so we don't know what's going to happen there. But I think that he has done everything right and gone about it the right way and has looked really, really solid and I think is, is set up, um, you know, to to have a really great run. The only the only bad thing is he's probably on the hardest night of the week on Wednesday. So if he can get a good heat race draw, you know, and, and pick off a few guys and, and maybe sneak into a qualifier, 
Um, I don't. I would not be surprised at all to see him in the prelim feature on Wednesday. Well, he's bringing a lot of eyes to this Flow Racing broadcast, so that is uh, that's a, always an overall a positive. net positive. Yes, it is absolutely. You had him on the podcast, right? We did. Yep. Uh, him and him and Kyle both were on uh, this week, and um, I, I think you know Chase had some good comments on there too because. Um, you know, I'm sure he's getting advice from everybody, or, or or wants to get advice from you know from everybody just naturally. But he said he's gone about it by keeping his circle very small and just asking basically Kyle and Chase Briscoe, who's his teammate, obviously this week. So uh, he's asking the right people, he's asking the right questions, and I think he's I think everybody's been made a believer for sure. Now we'll the proof's, a, now the proof's got to be in the pudding. Yeah. Exactly. No, exactly. And, he, and he knows that, you know, and that's the thing too that you know that I like about how he's gone about it is uh, he understands that and respects that, respects the challenge that he's got in front of him. Um, but I think he's going about it the right way. Well, we'll get to watch your teammate here for this hot lap session, Christopher Bell, three-time champion, out in this session number twenty-three. How big of an asset, obviously being a Chili Bowl champion and a great race car driver, but how big of an asset is it? to all the other drivers to learn from his experience and, and his talent. Oh, yeah, it's huge. I mean, especially for me, you know, to have him as a teammate, just to the, – the thing that I like, too, about Christopher is that he's not a hoverer. You know, he doesn't he doesn't try to tell you how to do things. If you ask, he will tell you. Um, and, and that's, I think, invaluable is just that you know he's there, and if you need him, you know, he's going to, he's gonna, you know, willingly offer advice to try and help you. So uh, he's a great teammate. It's great. It's been great to, you know, get to race with him. Not even just here at the Chili Bowl, but uh, you know, at some of the outdoor races we've run together too. It's been great to have him as a teammate. Well, that's one of the things about you guys as team, though. You are all individually accomplished in your own right. There's no slouch there that really needs to go. And hey, how do I drive a race car? Yeah, no, and, and you're exactly right. I mean, even you know, a guy like Chris Windham, um, you know, national midget champion, USAC Triple Crown champion, obviously knows how to drive a race car. So, uh, and I mean, Aaron Reitzel, you know, I mean, that's the that's the thing is, and Geo too. I mean, all those guys for me you know are, are obviously super accomplished race car drivers and having them to lean on is is always is always a you know advantage for me coming into this building well you're no slouch yourself I mean, <laughs> we've seen you in this building do big things we've seen you out when you do get to go play race car do big things as well so don't sell yourself short we're, we're looking for big things from dylan welch this week there's there, alex bright i was so gonna that say so there's a guy we, we missed uh, about four or five hot lap sessions ago that's back out there and and to kind of circle back, Dylan, you still hold track record at Kokomo, don't you? I do, yep. How about that? Cool. Yep, I do, <laughs> yep. Yeah, I would. Uh, I never would have thought that I'd, <laughs> I'd hold a track record anywhere in a dirt midget, let alone at Kokomo. So uh, that one's special for sure. What is it about those guys with uh, the behind-the-scenes guys who don't get to race all that often holding track records for a while at some of these tracks? You at Kokomo, Hess in the midget, yeah, and Eldora, Eldora for all that yeah, time. Exactly, yep. yep. Yeah, I think Mike's is a little cooler than mine is. <laughs> midget, midget track record at El Toro I, is about as cool as it's it gets. It's a thing. It's a thing. You looked at the 79 of Keith Martin on the raceway. And you see Rico out there again, too. You know, I think some of these guys have race of champions cars, too, that they're probably shaking down. So uh, I know there's been some scuttle on, on the interwebs of guys <laughs> going out multiple times, but I know there are some guys that are running, you know, two cars that have a race of champions car yeah. and a car that they'll, a different car that they'll run on their prelim night. So that's sometimes why, uh, you know, you see guys out a couple times. That was Anthony Esberg stopped in the back straight away. The 1X entry. Ooh, the Allgaier car is out there. Talk about early front runner for best appearing, yep. which is not an actual award, but needs to be. Yeah. We'll get a look at the Justin Allgaier Evil Knievel themed car. He Hammett. was super good last year for Flea Rusick and his team, you know, making the show. And, I mean, he's been super – I watched his onboard the other oh. day, and it was fun to watch. And there's a good look at it right there, man. And Flea, you know, Flea is always about attention to detail. <laughs> he's got an American flag on their trailer in the pits and a little fan that is blowing the American flag. So it's oh, not wow. just hanging limp, so it's blowing at the top of his trailer. So. I hadn't seen it the first time. Look at the, the background print of evil behind yep. the Team Ripper logo. Oh, that's good looking. Yeah, beautiful car. That's one thing about Flea is is he's obviously a an innovator and a, a brilliant mind when he when it comes to building race cars and setting up race cars. But he cares about how they look too, and and yep. he always comes to this race with some really nice looking race cars. 
remember his all chromed out car that he had last. That yeah. I thought that was gorgeous. Yeah, he said you know he had the AJ Foyt yeah. car with Jesse Colwell, I think a couple years ago or last year. Last even, year, so, yeah. yeah. Get a so. look at the seventy eight M. Driver of that one, Merle Sherb. As green flags out on this hot lap session. They were kind of bunched up and packed up on the front straightaway, so it's going to take a second for them to separate. There's Christopher Yep to the outside. Not running the left side panel down the tube there. I've seen that a few times, Dylan. That doesn't do anything, does it? No, and that's honestly, I think, just a, a Christopher preference. Um, I think just visually, you know, just prefers that... There's no sail panel, you know, on the left side of the car there. His micros are set up that same way, and I think their wing sprint car as well is kind of the same way. It doesn't have that, that back panel on the left rear. Kaylee Bryson is the Keith Goods Motorsport 71 that was in your screen for a second. 87F is Johnny Kent. Working on the high side of, I think, Jeff Wheeler 71. 72 is Jeffrey Champagne. Get a look at Rico's 97 back into the picture, making the low groove look good. 93 of Kyle Bellum. The Nixon Nightmare. Well, you said it earlier. If Rico has the low side working, Chris Will, there, that's scary yeah. early. Yeah, I think a lot of people just point to him as a guy who's going to run the cushion, but when he figures it out on the bottom, I mean, that's just danger for everybody else in the field but good hot lap session there unfortunately once again if you're just tuning into flow racing we do not have the transponder loop up so an unfortunate can't give you lap times or how drivers are doing chad winfrey was in the 321 car that went up the ramp first just give everybody there a couple of seconds as you are watching live coverage practice here on flow racing 35th annual lucas oil chili bowl nationals our coverage brought to you by nos energy drink Caleb Hart, Chris Wilner, Dylan Welch joining us in the booth for a little bit. Hot lap group 24 of 29 about to hit the racetrack. So we're just mowing them down here on this Monday afternoon now. Just after 1240 Central Time. Once again, we'll coverage on flow on Facebook here through hot lap group 29. Then take a big old break before we're back to flow racing and the flow racing app for night number one of the Chili Bowl Nationals. They'll begin at 5 p.m. Central Time with hot laps. Slated to go off, yep, 5 Central, though, again, given the shorter field, they may not hit the track till quarter after 5 or so. Or if they want to be early, get that done and have a lot of time for opening ceremonies. Either way, you're not going to miss a lap. 5 Central, 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific. Just turn on Flow, flowracing.com, and have us up, ready to roll, and you won't miss a thing. And we talked about all the videos, too, as well, Dylan. I mean, all the content on Flow. You could watch almost every Chili Bowl since 92. Yeah, the, the, the Flow guys have done a great job of getting all kinds of footage from the older races and, and even races like last year. You know, the, all the prelim features have been up, and uh, it's been fun for me, a good way for me to kind of get prepped is, is watching all those old races. You see KJ Snow stopped here on the top of turn two, it looks like. We were not, uh, we were supposed to see Snow way earlier in this, so Snow, one of those guys begging for forgiveness and coming out a little bit late. And I know, Dylan, you had Flo on all weekend for the shootout there last week. You wanna get in one of those things and run the shootout now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I honestly had never watched much of the shootout, you know, came out only the, the one time that, that you raced, Chris, and, and was able to, to watch it, but, uh, and, and KJ was another one of those guys, obviously, that was racing at the shootout a couple weeks ago. But um, a great way for, you know, several of these guys that did double duty just to get laps here. You know, obviously the micros and midgets race differently and drive differently, but it's still laps in this building on this racetrack, and you're getting all your sight lines and everything down uh, a week and a half early, you know, be earlier than, than everybody else is. So uh, guys like Brady Bacon, and Christopher Bell, you know, that are, are micro graduates, you know, that's how they came up through the ranks. Uh, they still come back and get to race the shootout. Uh, it's a great way for them to just kind of get in the zone. Well, there's Justin Allgaier out there. Is uh, This field has thinned out significantly. There's a guy looking to add another Friday prelim to his resume, Justin Grant. Moved over to RMS from Rams Racing. 
One X or one K of Brayton Lynch. Back to Grant. I think last year he was going to go for a fourth straight Friday prelim and then just missed the win there, but locked her in the show. Well, as good as those guys he was racing against were last year. And he had some hitters, including Tanner Thorson making that night. J.J. Yaley. Mm -hmm. Always good to see him back. USAC Triple Crown winner. And Brent Beauchamp was stopped in the infield. Not sure if he was able to. We had a number of cars pull off early yeah. push off. T.J. Smith's 83 was out there for a minute. Guy who made some noise at the shootout. And he pushed off early. So that uh, session ended up awfully thin very quickly. Good for the drivers, a lot of clean air, not around anybody else. You make a flub up, you're not in big, big danger. Yep. So that was theoretically 24. 25 and 26 are coming out. We're starting to see some shuffle forward out of some sessions as well. As, hey, you ready? Cool. Go out hot lap. Let's get this thing done. Scheduled to go through 29. Don't know if we're actually going to get there at this point in time. There's Cannon McIntosh. So that was another one that was missing way earlier. That's assuredly going to be if that's the um, if that's going to be the Viroc car, that might be. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm working their way down the ramp. Ten J. You mentioned Lane Tanner Goodman. Thorson. He's going to be in this next one too. He was fun to watch last year as well. Had I think broke running second or third there in the feature. And there is his new ride with Dave Mack Motorsports. A late changeover there. Boy, from Malloy to Dave Mack. He was one of those guys that people were looking to as this, okay, if somebody's going to break the break the Kyle Rico Bell glut that is the platinum group in this year's pool, right? Thorson was your best bet of a lot of that. You had a lot of people going, all right, if I don't want to take those three, he's my guy. You feel like... He could do that exact same thing if things break right for him. If things break right for him. I think on Friday nights, I mean, you know, he won last year, obviously, but even getting to the Saturday features, too, you know, he hasn't won, but I think he's consistently been one of, if not the best car at the end of the race on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I think the nice thing, too, you know, Chris, you, you mentioned him, him kind of moving around rides and everything this year. You know, I think the nice thing and the good thing about Tanner, what makes him so good is that he does his own setups. You know, he's he's trying to get the coil car, the four coils, um, you know, back to prominence and has done so. You know, and there's there's plenty of other guys now who are trying to emulate that. But uh, he does his own thing, sets up his own cars. And so I think when you go from car to car like that, it just makes it a little easier because you're not having to adjust to a crew chief who's setting up the race car. You're setting up your own car. You know what it's going to do. You know what it's going to feel like. You know, there's a few differences, you know, with the chassis and everything. The Rodella car was a, a King chassis and Dave Max or Spike. So there's a little difference there. But in principle, it's it's the same. So I think that aids him a little bit when he does change rides like that to adapt quickly. And, and I expect him to be just as competitive this week. He learned at the feet of Lee Lindgren, California crew chief, who's uh, wrenched a lot of quality operations, has a lot of wins to his name. And to that... You get a car that's responsive to change. Okay, it might be a little snug on the right rear. Okay, this one actually gets down to the left rear, which is a strange thing for a midget. But as long as you have a car that is reacting to what you're doing to it, then you can make those little micro adjustments you need to get up and to be one of those top one percenters that are going for an A main win here on Saturday night. Yeah, and that's where that's where he excels. You know, is is finding that little extra, uh, you know, not even a tenth of a second, you know, less than that. And, and I think a lot of it too is that. A lot of times he just outdrives people. You know, he he obviously is on top of the game with the setup, but just stands on the gas and drives the crap out of the, these race cars, and um, I, that goes a long way too. Obviously, yeah, that will to and that desire is never never lacking on the Thorson team, whatever he's driving. So cars are staged as you get a look at the fourteen, one of the fourteens, one of multiple fourteens that expecting to have out there. Jake Nail's entry. He had a good shootout, too, as well. I feel like every one of these hot lab groups am saying, oh, there's a guy who had a good shot, you know, to win a driller last week, two weeks ago. I like the uh, finish oh, yeah. on the headers and muffler on the Thorson car. That looks good. Some attention was paid to that detail. 
We saw uh, coming down the ramp two as well, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Will be in the next hot lap group in 25, though. We do have the 11-H of Harley White. What a story Harley's had, and I believe she still is the highest finishing female here in the Chili Bowl in the B-Main on Saturday. Look to there's improve Ricky. that by a couple of spots. Yep. Stenhouse Racing motivated. Every time he gets to jump in an open-wheel car, it's just enjoying a resurgence in those things. Well, I think he had his he had his best run, you know, Chili Bowl run last year going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously on Friday night uh, was leading the prelim feature and, and kind of got caught up on a restart and, uh, you know, ended his night. But looked as good as I've seen him look in a midget in a long time last year. So excited to see what he can do this week. Again, both groups, 25 and 26, will roll out onto the raceway. They will wave 26 into the middle and set them loose after group. 25 goes. These are Friday cars. We are into Friday qualifiers now. Did you get a look at Jesse Caldwell's 14? He had a big year in outlaw cards out at Red Bluff and around California. And he ran that AJ Foyt scheme for Flea last year at the Chili Bowl. There's Harley White. Car looks good. Harley running across the ASCS National Tour as well out in the Midwest and out west they didn't really get out west this year unfortunately yeah. with pandemic 2020 we missed them on their pacific northwest and montana swing but looking forward to fingers crossed a resume to normalcy as far as that goes we'll see we live in an interesting day age and time and if a promoter out there hasn't put tentative on their schedule at some point in time over the last like year and a half i don't they, they probably should have been. Ethan Mitchell, I believe the only Honda in the list of entries. Bundy built team. He ran the shootout as well for Dave Mack and just kind of had a whale of a week, ups and downs. As we look at Cannon McIntosh. So you say the 10 cars in the Keith Coon stable, and that's not counting the Viroc yeah. cars. Yeah, it's incredible. And I know, you know, on Flow, Dylan, we were talking about the the big team, super teams now. It feels like it's almost a, a, a competition of who's going to bring the most cars. Yeah, it, it is. It's been amazing. You know, it started obviously with Keith, you know, bringing all these cars. And then, you know, each year there's teams that bring five, six, seven, eight. And it seems like this year there's just so many guys in really, really good cars. You know, there's, there's a lot more true super teams. You know, you look at like the Matt Wood team that is just loaded with talent. Um, you know, Clawson Marshall has a really solid lineup. Keith's lineup obviously is great. There's a lot of multi-car teams that are really just kind of stacking the deck. So it, it makes makes the prelim nights and, and obviously Saturday that much more difficult because you've got really good guys now in really good cars as opposed to really good guys in, in cars that are okay that they can probably make up for with their talent. Now they've got a really, really good race car too. So it, it makes it that much tougher. All right, they've waved session 26 off. 25 remains out there, plus the tag on of the Macintosh, or assuming the Macintosh Fire Rock car. And you see Tanner Thorson in your screen again to look at Caldwell. Driving for Robert Dolby this year, another guy who's expanded his operation, obviously competed the entire USAC National Midget schedule, relocated from his home in California to the Indianapolis area and brought three cars here to the Chili Bowl this week. Look at Harley White as she enters corner number three here at Expo Raceway, the River Spirit Expo Center. Well, Tosh off the bottom of three and four. That moisture didn't last so long as we've got Harley White up and smoke off of corner number two, so just as we talked about her. And putting, it looked like putting some moisture down in behind her too. I saw the shiny streak, which might just be slick off the, uh, it might be uh, that yeah, reflected. Uh, then now it. you can see it. Yeah, something blew up. That's a shame, but luckily, you know, like we keep reiterating, if it's going to happen, happen now. But yeah, that's a lot of fluid coming out. 
Yeah, that's what we were talking about, Caleb. When uh, you know, that makes it a little uh, little easier to pinpoint exactly where the problem is when it uh -huh. when it goes like that. So Harley pushed off and in the infield. The ref break for her, but a Friday night qualifier. So four days to figure out what it was, how to fix it. Do we have a spare? Throw the spare in. Do we not have a spare? Who's renting one? Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's the thing about the racing community. You know, we've seen that at the shootout. Guys have had engine trouble early. Uh, go out okay. and get some generosities. People pulling some money together to get a new motor. and The Tony Pennick story. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I was like, yeah. what was his last name? Yeah, so Tony Pennick, who blows a motor in hot laps. Uh, it's Kawo Kawasaki. Mm -hmm. Kawasaki uh, doesn't have the spare ready to go. Everybody rallies behind him, puts some money together for Panic, rents a spare, and the spare sucks a valve. Yeah. Like two laps into running it, it's a rough deal. But they tried. So Thorson and McIntosh, and I, this is interesting to me. I wonder if Tanner's going to race them a little. I'm going to say, uh, boys, it's not your qualifier night yet, but have at it. That might be a volley just thrown out for a little bit later. We talked about that when, what was it? It was Bell and somebody else at the shootout. And somebody beat Bell off the corner doing something. We said that might have repercussions for a week from now. I think I remember, yeah, yeah. Dylan, as far as a driver now, what are you looking at the track? What are you seeing, especially out the windows here in the Brian Kopinski announcer's booth? Yeah, I mean, you know, the Monday practice track conditions are always, you know, like we were saying earlier, you know, you never really know what it's going to be like. And obviously, uh, like for me, you know, I was group 11. It was much better than it is now. But um, the nice thing is, you know, is that when the track is like this, when it's got a cushion, uh, you know, and the bottom is still, there's a lane down there. It really is a nice simulation of, of later in, in the night, you know, or, or even later in the day on Saturday um, and gives you a great way to to figure out exactly where you need to be better or, or where you're good, where you feel like the car is working well. So, um, you know, the, the track is slick right now, but I think, you know, for a guy like Thorson, uh, he probably prefers it that way because, you know, that way you can figure out, okay, we need to be a little, little maybe tighter on the bottom or, or, you know, change something different to run the top better. So, um, these guys that, that, you know, thrive in conditions like this, they love when the track's like this. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in your picture. Are you a slick guy or are you a tacky guy? Well, Chad's cars are really good <laughs> in the slick, so I... I uh, so you better be so a slick guy. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't mind the, the slick conditions here, so... Uh, and I, I love running the bottom here, you know, running the bottom here is a lot of fun. And, difficult obviously with the, the with the berm down there that's pretty uh you know pretty uncommon anywhere else you go there's not a berm like there is here so um difficult to to kind of wrap your head around but if if you can do it well uh it makes running the bottom here a lot of fun runner up a few years back darren Pittman in the 21 recently retired darren Pittman, at least from full-time competition the Chili Bowl always brings them back. <laughs> Everybody wants to run the no Chili Bowl. No one's retired. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to run the Chili Bowl. That's Noah Gas that stopped up in the corner here. We saw Noah a little bit earlier. And I seem to remember him getting all of his laps, but he's back out here with some kind of issue. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. back with Kloss and Marshall once again for another Chili Bowl attempt. You ever want to get an idea of how tight the cockpit of a midget is the next time we get a shot of Ricky going down the back straightaway, your left arm is nearly even with that sail panel over on that corner. These things, they're not built for tall guys like you, Dylan. No, they're not. They, uh, or wide guys like me. Yeah, they, they are not built for uh, for the bigger boys, tall or wide. There's, there's no doubt about that. So, yeah, it, it's funny, you know, depending on how you sit sometimes in these cars, if you relax, you know, your elbow can get into the left rear tire. Yep. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt generally, but it, it gets your attention certainly and, you know, <laughs> leave a tire mark on your on your elbow or something. But, um, you know, for those bigger guys, it, it's a tight fit for sure. Still trying to get Jimmy gas Glenn. fired up there. Jimmy Glenn 7 that you saw. I remember hot lapping my focus midget. It's been four years ago now, and I did it without the left sail panel on it. Came in, I'm like, why is my suit coated in cl Oh. Yep. <laughs> Bingo. 
like you were saying, that left sail panel doesn't really serve a function. These cars, I mean, aerodynamics on them are kind of a joke anyways, but, you know, it's a place to put sponsors, and that's about it. And yeah. maybe keep your car a little bit cleaner from mud getting in the cockpit if you're one of those guys. Well, and so much of this race, too, is just about, you know, who looks the best, who has the best-looking cars, you know. So it uh, – and the nice thing is, you know, with, with the Chili Bowl rules is – is this is the place where you can be a little innovative and a little different and do things like, you know, be completely bare on the left side like, you know, Christopher's car is. And, uh, you know, you see some guys have, obviously, the, the door on the left side. I'm yep. partial to the open cockpit so you can see the guys working, which uh, I'm glad to see on, on a lot of the new bodies that are out there is uh, there's no door on the left side. It's Gage Rucker right there through the slick. As we look back toward the 14 of Jody Rosenblum. Rosenblum, the car we were talking about when you saw that fully enclosed left side panel. And Sam Hayford King Jr. right in behind him, very similar style. Should be Aaron Warner's 11. Pittman to the 21. Sneaking around the bottom there, Stenhouse in the 17. Darren always brings really good cars here as Ricky gets underneath there. You just see how slick it is. But he'll be one to watch, and he'll be back in the Viroc again on Tuesday night as a lookout. It's nice, too, how they've done practice this year where you're practicing against cars that you're going to race on your prelim night, even though it is just practice. I'm sure, you know, for Ricky, he just drove by Darren Pittman there. It, it makes you feel good, you know, even <laughs> though it is practice, you know, you know that you're going to have to race him again uh, in a few days. So anytime you can you can drive by a guy, especially of his caliber, it, it uh, doesn't hurt the confidence. Yeah, Caleb and I were talking about, I think, was it you that owned a I won hot lap shirt? Or was that Scotty Cook? Scotty Cook. Scotty Cook. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that doesn't do much, but. Well, and, and that's the thing too, right, is that everybody knows that this is just practice, but, um, you know, so much of, of doing well here is just about being confident enough to put your car in the right place and, and, and knowing that the car is going to work how you want it to. And um, even if you do have a good practice session on Monday, you know, it, it sets the tone and, and maybe gives you, um, you know, a little more confidence going into your prelim night. Three more hot lap sessions here for the 35th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. Live on Flow Racing. You're joining us on Facebook. We will carry the rest of Hot Laps here on Facebook. And then a long break before we get going for our Cummins qualifying night, night number one. As, as you see, the water wagon has made its way out to the racing surface. A little more moisture here for these final three groups. Everything they do now is uh, something they don't have to do a little bit later. And it's again, true. they're going to have a window of ballpark three and a half hours to get the track back into conditions for hot lapping for tonight's prelim event. Again, hot laps about 5 central. Um, we will have every lap of it live on Flow Racing, flowracing.com. And then racing for prelim night number one, it's supposed to start 6 o'clock, at least with opening ceremonies. So Dylan, on Monday, now that you're you're done for the day, what's what's the game plan? You kind of help out, you watch, you just kind of stay out of the way. I, st <laughs> I stay out of the way. Yeah, it's okay. uh, you know Wyndham runs tonight, and um, I'm certainly not going to be down there trying to tell him what to do or, or how to drive. So um, I'll stay out of the way and, and be a race fan night. And and um, you know I've run Tuesday for you know many years, and it was always the first night. But I, I kind of like having a night to watch and and just kind of look how the track changes throughout the night and then you take that into consideration you know a little bit uh you know for your prelim night my you know my prelim night in my case is tomorrow so um just be a race fan tonight and, and watch and try and learn as much as we can and uh, and then go after it tomorrow so not to give away the trade secrets a little <laughs> bit here you said that the boat car is extremely good in the slick right a main on saturday night's a 55 lapper and we've seen we saw it winged outlaw shootout we've seen it for the chili bowl a main for a couple of years how tacky they keep that racetrack and how long that tacky tends to last is that any consideration in the camp at the moment well yeah i mean absolutely you know and i think the good thing about chad is that um you know he's raced in in several chili bowl saturday a main so he understands how the track changes uh and that's one of the things one of the places that he excels you know is is the car being good at the start of the race but then uh, even maybe better at the end of the race, you know, when the track does slick off. But it's it's certainly good enough at the beginning, too, that you're not going to be losing time or anything like that. So, um, 
you know, but obviously we all know that the track just loses moisture as the night goes. So that's where you need to be good. Sure. And, and I feel like that, uh, that his cars are, you know, are really good when the track, uh, you know, kind of blows off a little bit and, and does get a little slick. Um, so considering a 55 lap or how much fuel are you burning over the course of that? And can you feel the fuel load burning off and making changes to the race car? You definitely can feel the feel it burning off. You know, the, the one feature start on Saturday that I have um, was 2016 and I started at the, at the back. And like you said, you know, the track was was really heavy um, and kind of one lane at the start just because that's how they have to prep it so that it's good at the end of 55 laps. Um, but you go down in the corner and you have to drive it differently because you've got, you know, a full tank of fuel behind you. So uh, it's not like it's a silver crown car or anything, you know, where the, the fall off is going to be that drastic. But you certainly feel it. You know, the, the nose is light. And um, if you don't have the car rotated on the corner entry, it's going to push. So uh, you do have to drive it differently. And it, and it makes it that much harder, too, when the track is heavy, um, you know, to get the car rotated. Saw Rico coming back on the racetrack without the engine cover, so you got to figure that that's just what making sure this thing fires. Yeah, yeah, that's generally what they'll do. Is if you just need to fire the car, you push down the ramp and, and take your engine cover off, and and they'll push you off, and and then you just drive it right back up the ramp. Looking at Harley Hollins number twenty five, the driven Midwest entry. As he will join us for what is supposed to be hot lap session number twenty seven. 27, 28, and 29, and then we are done. 29 only supposed to have, there's like about eight cars in it. So Some good ones, too, including Aaron Wright, so he'll round out has, hot laps. Has there been a session with a turd? I mean, you know. <laughs> no. There's been a guy to talk bowl. about and a guy who's capable of an A-main start or an A-main win in every single one of these. That's the quality of the depth of this field. There's a guy, too, Tucker Klossmeyer, that you just saw turn onto the racetrack that um, – had a really, really good week last year and um, has, has kind of taken some time off of the midget scene but is back with Keith Coons this year and, and I think is just going to be as, as competitive as he was last year. Ace McCarthy, haven't gone to see the school bus yet, oh, the but I, I'm sure bus. I'll make my way out that way. They, they he, just, he asked Dave Mack because he's you know, running Dave Mack's car. He said, can I put the car in the back? And he said, absolutely. Made the trek from... Tulacqua, I think that's how you say it, Oklahoma. It's very close. You can, folks okay. at home can correct me. Brian Ward is our official o Oklahoma Oki. pronunciation yes. guide. Yes. So whenever we need that, he'll text it. He'll pipe in. Casey Schumann will be in this next one. World of Outlaw late model series director, correct? Tahlequah. He's been coming here. Tahlequah, thank Tahlequah. you. Shoe's been here forever. Oh, and the Colfax Comet, Robert Bell. Oh, boy. Hey, look, another Tyler Thomas appearance. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> At this point, we're just going to just see who comes on down the road. Right. Right. He's running out of time, unfortunately, to get, his, get yeah. his car running here. He's only got three more groups, so hopefully he can get it figured out here. Maybe he's just... Uh, the, thing is, the thing is, too, he needs to get it fired, and then he needs to actually practice. Yeah. So, you know, that you really are running out of time here because, uh, you know, obviously if it fires, he'll be able to stay out there and, and get some laps. But um, if it doesn't, this session, he's probably out of time. Ronnie Gardner making his way out in the 68. Good to see Ronnie picked up a ride. He was another one of those guys that late in the process was kind of hunting up and looking for something to something to do. Mm -hmm. I remember the exact tweet, hey, kind of late notice, but dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Good you to know, see him and guys like Anton actually finding a good seat. And we saw that at the shootout, too. The same thing. You know, I don't know. I mean, you're going to get that every year, but I think in the world we live in, too, as well, a lot of last-minute decisions were made of who's going to run what and when. And obviously for the shootout, you know, a lot of the midget guys that go down to New Zealand, you know, that trip obviously does not happen. Mm -hmm. So they were able to run the shootout. And then, sure, we're missing some of those folks, you know, from down under as well. Michael Pickens, I know, would love to be here. Yep. It was interesting. We talked about this with Quentin Boyles on the shootout broadcast, um, how many people were still working on their stuff unloaded. Yeah. And I heard that there's actually a, a decent amount of people who are still doing things like uh, Jimmy Miller last night said there was a guy swapping on a rear end last night <laughs> as they're coming and loading out. There was a lot of is this going to happen itis even up until, you know, okay, today I got to take off. Okay, we'll throw it in the car and throw the spares in, and we'll, we'll swap it out when we get there if we need to, right? Right. I, I feel like there's a good chunk of that here in the midget world as well of, well, shootout still got to go off, and it's got to go off without a hitch. Okay, now we'll load up and we'll go, right? Yeah. It's the world we live in. And hats and hats off to everybody at the shootout because, I you know, I think that, I think that everybody had just assumed that since the shootout was going to happen, Chili Bowl was going to happen, but – 
you know, everybody, they kind of put the fear of God and everybody yeah. that, hey, this isn't a guarantee, yep. which was the right approach because that's exactly what they needed to do to make sure that, uh, you know, we could all be here at the Chili Bowl to race. So yep. hats off to everybody here in the, the Expo Center and, and that ran the shootout to, uh, you know, make sure that they did their job so we could come have some fun. In a year in which we did not run a Knoxville Nationals, we did not run a, uh, we didn't run a Kings Royal, we didn't run a World Finals. Yeah, we had substitutes, kind of, but, you know, we managed to get a Tulsa shootout, and it looks like we're managing to get a Chili Bowl Nationals in. That's pretty cool. It's a bright spot, which we could all use these yeah. days. Yes. Well, engine's firing. Again, this is 27 and 28. They'll split 28 and throw it into the middle after a couple of laps of engine heat and run the moisture in. And again, everybody's going to get a couple of seconds on the video screen once we get going that way you can see your favorite driver your favorite car wherever you're watching in from here on flow racing's facebook is there is ronnie gardner we talked about him just a couple of seconds ago and he's another guy that was kind of a what could have been last year uh got collected in, a, in an issue on his prelim night i think running third uh that, that took him out of contention and kind of derailed his week so uh, ronnie's always good here you know multi-time i think five-time usac western states midget champion so Knows how to wheel a midget. His stuff's always good here. Pretty sharp on the engine side of things as well. Worked for Eslinger yeah, for exactly. a long time. Exactly. I know we mentioned uh, the Colfax Comet, Robert Bell. Dylan, you probably remember this. I wasn't there when he oh, won his heat race. I'll never forget it. This place it. freaking went nuts. That was uh, <laughs> that was about as cool of a moment as you as you could have in this building. It was uh, brought everybody to their feet. They were all cheering for him. It was cool. Josh Hawkins in the 80 car pulls off. He told me last year they came up with a new nickname. They called him the Kidney Stone because he's hard to pass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Never a dull moment there with Robert Bells. He pulls off. Oh, so, no, he's going to be in. Yeah, he's going to be in the next one. Speaking of which, Dean Mills back with us this weekend after having not passed the Kidney Stone that put him in the oh, ER no. a couple days ago. So, Dean, we're thinking of you. We're, we're hoping that that thing gets out of your system as quick as it can and shout out to your mom by the way bev mills who watches everything that dean films and a uh, condolences to bev dean and the family on the uh, passing of dean's brother here recently wanted to pass that along we're thinking of you guys well yellow flag in hand they'll turn the lights off and let them loose shortly klausmeyer is 27 into your screen Hey, look, Tyler Thomas runs. Yeah, it looks like it's it's uh, up to Don't speed. It. Well, th that's the thing is I think he got it running earlier and it died in the middle of the session. So oh, he just pulled off. Yeah, there, there goes. he goes. So, yeah, so they've, they've obviously got some sort of issue there that's preventing the car from getting up to uh, speed. It's got to be electric. You think about it, everything yeah. that it could be. If there was something in the drive line, it would have been diagnosed. We would have seen fluids. If it's something in the internal components of the engine – We'd see fluid, we'd see parts laying around, people angry. Well, and you know they're getting frustrated already because this is probably the fifth time or so that he's been out there, and you know they've changed something every time that they think surely this is going to be it, and they still continue to have the same problem. So uh, that's frustrating. You know, Tyler obviously is, is one of the best here in this building, is locked in through his prelim night before, and um, would like to get some practice laps because he makes limited starts these days too. So he can use all the laps he can get. You look at it, obviously a Toyota Racing Development engine, and they've got people here yeah, they to, do. to work on it. So they'll be all hands on deck trying to get one of the, the local favorites tuned up and ready to roll for his prelim night. There's Shu. There are a few people who love Chili Bowl more than uh, Brian Dunlap and, yep. and fielding cars for it. The countdown starts literally the day you pack the <laughs> yep. car up and If you have any question on what day, how many days it is, just go to his Twitter page. Dunlap car owner for both Casey Schumann and Gary Taylor. Oh, we have got smoke, and where there's smoke, you know how to finish that. Back no, straight away. I was just about away. to point out, too. I was like, where's the exhaust? Right it, side. It, no, I looked. I didn't see it. Unless it's, like, lower than what it is normal. The 14. Wil Eric Wilkins. Wilkins. Yeah, Eric Wilkins. Yeah, he came by over here in three and four, and I tried to look. Unless it's just lower on the car than you, you normally see it kind of stick up. That looks like a maybe a Honda, because um, I know there is multiple besides Ethan Mitchell. Oh, okay. 
you're getting a good idea. Uh, Jeff Davis of Quick Racing Products did a lot of the development on the Honda engine. Oh, it's like down there. Yeah. They had a really strange exhaust package back in the day. Chase Briscoe ran that car for yep. a couple of chili bowls. That exhaust was a pipe straight that literally came in like... Yeah, it looked like it was never going to end. No, it, it, <laughs> it ended like middle of the rear yeah. tire. Mm -hmm. Now, I couldn't quite get a good look down Wilkins' car to, to figure that out, but... Well, yeah. and, and that, you know, that Honda program has been interesting to follow. You know, obviously, Ethan Mitchell and his dad have, have been the ones that have kind of campaigned that the last couple of years on the USAC National Midget side. Uh, and they've, they have it running, you know, really, really well. I mean, it's, it's still, uh, you know, maybe down on power a little bit, but they have got it much, much better than it was even a year and a half, two years ago, and, and continue to make it better. You know, he set a fast time, I think, on the national midget scene this year somewhere. Um, so it's got it's got get up and go, you know, in the right circumstances at the right track. And yep. a place like this, you know, where you don't need a ton of horsepower, um, and, you know, honestly, maybe a little less isn't always a bad thing because it's less wheel spin. But um, they know how to make those things go. And th so those Honda motors are, are uh, they're little rippers for sure. Kudos to them for their stick to it. Absolutely. Green flag back out. Get a look at Klausmeyer. Behind him, in car number 72. I think you're looking at Sam Johnson's. I think that yeah, I think that was him. Yep. Now Ace McCarthy there in the Dave Mack car. Oh. Dave Mack car is all looking real sharp this year. And another 37 appearance. We've seen that car a few times. Well, that theoretically, if you're going by the list, should be the North Pole Nightmare. Billy Baylock. He was scheduled to be out in this session. Casey Schumann's 32. The track really kind of technical right now. There's not really much of a ledge, a cushion, or anything to lean on in one and two. Maybe a little more down here in three and four. But You would think these would be some of the slower lap times of the day. As we got a car smoking, we got a car turned around. It's Robert Bell who decides to wave to his fans. No, not Bell. No, nope, that is Wyatt, I think. It's a 35T. Casey Schmitz. Yeah. That electric blue shining off the glare from the windows here at the Expo Center. And yeah. they'll call that good. There's the aforementioned Brian Dunlap working his way back up the ramp. So here's a question for you guys. Okay. The notorious TBA 86 for Tucker Boat or for uh, <laughs> CB CB Industries is on our uh, our list for the final group here. Does it make an appearance? From what, you know, my insider, not named <laughs> Dylan Welch, but it is, uh, I'm going to say no. <laughs> uh, that's been a real, I've been interested, though, like, that's been talked about a lot. Everybody wants to know. Everybody's How many people have come over to the trailer yet today and been like, what's the deal with the 86? Yeah, I, have, I haven't seen many people over at the trailer, but I got several texts about it throughout the throughout the week leading up to this. Everybody's everybody's wanting to know. So that's, uh, we've got one more session here, I think, from... Um, is this 28 that's going yeah. out there right now? Yes. So, yeah, but then 29 will be out there at the end. So, If somebody came up to it last minute and said, hey, here's this pile of money, can I be the TBA? I mean, I th it's ready to race, I think. Huh? So it's uh, you never say never. But Well, if there wasn't a guy who was busy doing some late model racing and getting prepped for his season, a certain driver out of Fargo, North Dakota. Yeah. I'd say that'd be a good good place for him to end up. Certainly would. You know, if he was interested. Sure, sure. We all wanted to wanted to see Chad in and at least at least run the race of champions, right. maybe because this yeah. is his last year eligibility. Chad said that if the four of us Monday through Thursday, so me, Wyndham, Geo, and Christopher all locked in, so finished top two on our prelims, he would run it. But he didn't bring his gear, so I don't. I think that deal's off the table. Now gear too. is easily acquirable. Yep, that is too. Speaking of former Chili Bowl winners, there's the 71G, the Demon, Damian Gardner. They tell you that early on, Dylan, when you're a driver, never go to a track without your gear bag. Yep, absolutely. Ronnie Gardner, 68. We've got a car. Ooh. Throwing straps already. And that's yeah. That's never a good sign. One of the Josh Ford Motorsports cars, Tyler Edwards in the 73B. Yeah, when you're confident enough that you just blew up or broke enough to take your helmet off when you're still on the racetrack, that's never a good sign. Tyler 
Tyler ran the shootout too. Part of the tops up here, bud. Contingency. I saw Chase Jones out there too, an Indiana kid who uh, was racing for Kyle O'Gara last year and, and really did a nice job to, to kind of run up through the alphabet and uh, is in a good car this year driving for Brandon Gray. Good looking race car. Um, he's a guy that I think you know potentially could surprise a lot of people here. Maybe not as familiar with him, but stands on the gas. Is in good equipment. I think he could be somebody that could make some noise. We're supposed to have a Casey Kane appearance out in this session as well, so be looking for the 57W car out there. It's Gardner 71. It's Wesley Smith in the 44 as we'll go back to green. 80 car of Josh Hawkins. Car 81, Jones. 72, I think that's Chris Terrence entry. Ick, 56, and I believe that'll finish us off. Yeah, I know a lot of it has to do with the light, but man, the glare onto that racetrack, especially from our vantage point, as you can look at it, it turns one and two, but from our vantage point in the booth to three, I mean, it is just shiny. Well, and, and I don't know, you know, it always seems like, especially in practice, one and two always seems like it's the slicker of the two corner sets where, you know, it doesn't really build up a cushion, like a true cushion or anything like that. I don't know if there's just enough light coming through on it through those windows that it actually affects it and dries it out enough to, to do that. But for whatever reason, on Monday practice, it always seems like that's, that's a bit of a trouble spot is down there. It gets really slick. That's a good shot from our speedy cam. Camera will get a workout this week as you're looking at live coverage here on Facebook, Flow Racing's Facebook. Practice for the 35th annual Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. Our coverage all week on Flow Racing going to be brought to you by NOS Energy Drink. You know, we still haven't seen Casey Kane, but if my memory serves me correct, he actually did make an appearance earlier, so he may have just switched for an earlier group. They are really having to tiptoe and pedal those race cars right now. And that's a product, too, of it being the second to last group. You know, obviously, they're they're not going to work the racetrack and, and completely re-prep it, knowing that at the end of the next session, they're going to tear it up completely to prep it for the prelim night tonight. So uh, that comes with the territory. You know, you know that going in when you're one of the last groups that, uh, you know, the racetrack may not be as, as good as it was certainly earlier in the day. Give you a chance to work on your slick track setup, right? Absolutely. Are you twisting knobs and dials within the car during your practice session for this, for all the cockpit adjustments that you have? I generally am not, uh, but that's just me because I'm trying to get the you know feeling back and get the the rhythm back of being in the race car. So I'm usually not. And thankfully, you know, for the most part, our cars are usually pretty spot on in practice. That you're just kind of trying to make sure you get some clean race track and and uh, you know kind of try to lay down some laps to get a good baseline. You see the Aaron Reitzel car, Chris Windham is in that. Aaron is, uh, I believe, at home still building sprint cars to go uh, World of Outlaw racing next year. So um, not supposed to be here, I don't think, until later in the week. So Chris is going to hot lap his car. He was super impressive last year, Aaron Reitzel. I mean, had some unfortunate you know, issues there with some contact. But, boy, man, he when that thing was on a rail, it was absolutely fun to watch. And I think he's someone that really opened a lot of people's eyes to what he could do behind the wheel of a midget. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, and it, uh, he's, you know he's run midgets before, but uh, I think you're right. You know, I think that was that was certainly his best opportunity in a midget, and, uh, and he proved that he can get in about anything and make it go fast. He uh, is the kind of guy who's got a chili bowl mentality. Absolutely. He's, his, his mental prep and how he approaches driving a race car would suit him well through doing well in this race. Well, and we saw, we we saw, saw that, that mentality <laughs> last year, you know, put on display a couple times. But, but you're right. I mean, you know, if you're going to um, 
if you're going to use somebody up, I mean, this is kind of the place to do it, you know, because every position, you know, whether it's, you know, your heat race on your prelim night or, or you know, later on on Saturday, mm -hmm. every position truly does matter. And if you've got even, um, you know, even a, a hint of being able to, to clear somebody or, or, or something like that, you got to take it. You know, it sucks when you're on the receiving end of it. There's no doubt about that. Um, but you're right. You know, you, it's an aggressive mentality that's required to succeed in this building. And and Aaron certainly has that. I'm going to paraphrase the quote a little bit because I don't remember exact words. <laughs> well, with all the cars that I've passed tonight, if he's the only one I've yeah. taken out, I think I'm doing and pretty good. I mean, he's 100% right. You know, I mean, he uh, he got around a lot of race yeah, cars. He was 100% accurate about that. So he did pass a lot of race cars. Logan Seavey going to get another run here. You watched uh, Clinton Boyles watching from the bottom of the ramp. We'll have Clinton in the booth once or twice. Kevin Swindell's coming in. Dylan, you got some free time? You want to come do it? <laughs> yeah, I'd love All right, to. Cool. Yeah, I'll be around. All right. Enjoyed having you in here. Yeah, we'll get, a, we'll get a list. We'll pencil you in. That's yeah, right. See if you can squeeze me in somewhere. <laughs> Chris Wellner and I will be here all week. Chris, are you going to roam? You gonna I'll probably be roaming a lot. Yep. Okay. And I'll be in the infield and stuff. So. Okay. Uh, but anytime I, I could be next to you, you know. Oh. I'll be there. <laughs> You're just saying that because I brought you coffee. I know. Uh, Connor Wade will be with us. Scotty Cook will be with us, amongst others. Brian Ward is uh, dynamite in the infield because he knows all the track prep guys. He's been here since he was a wee little baby, right, and has seen everything yep. that they do to Expo Raceway. So he'll be our man on the scene with accidents and stuff like that. You'll see him at the top of the ramp a couple of times. He's a man of multiple talents, so... I don't know if you guys saw on the ramp cam, but Chuck McGilvery may be the first car I've seen at the Chili Bowl with flowers. Yeah, how about that? Look at that. Matching the tail tank of that Man, race car. That's a sharp-looking tail tank. That's pretty cool. Now I kind of want a purple race car. So instead of smell my tailpipe, it smell my flowers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we'll see how long they last. See yeah. how fast <laughs> it gets going if any of the, uh, any of the, the leaves well, will stay on there. You think they're zip-tied, or you think they're 100 mile an hour tape? Yeah, I don't. It, they look... They look like they were put on there pretty clean, so maybe no. zip tied. Huh. For a second, I was like, "That's a new looking GoPro." Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's the different approach. You know, you got you know you local street stock guys with the stuffed animals taped to the <laughs> yeah. a, the a post. You know, we got flowers here. So. No offense to the street stock right. guys. Right. No, it's it's uh it's one of my favorite parts about watching the races is the different uh, different beanie babies that you get to see <laughs> when you're wandering the pits there. <laughs> 22L, that should be Logan Sherb. Again, you kind of got a mishmash of cars in this session who might have missed earlier. and Some have had problems and come back out. I saw KJ Snow back out I think yeah. for the third time. Uh, TJ Smith was back out there in one of the JFM 83 cars. He had pushed off early. There's a look at Snow and Pilot Light still not really coming on. And, man, that's so frustrating, you know, for a guy like KJ, you know, who doesn't, doesn't have a ton of midget experience to – to come here and, and you're excited about running the Chili Bowl and, and then your stuff doesn't run. So, uh, you know, all you want to do when you don't have a lot of laps is, is get laps on Monday and then when the car doesn't fire, it's uh, it's super disheartening. And that's one of the drawbacks of these guys who only bring their stuff out for this show. If something went wrong on the last one and you don't know about it, your time to get it fixed, especially if it's an internal, if it's a, a, an engine problem, you know, small teams may not have a spare power plant available to them that they could have gotten fixed at some point during right. the year if they'd run more often. Yeah, your resources certainly are, are a little more limited here than being able to just tow your car back to your shop where you've got all your tools and everything to, to really kind of diagnose what exactly the issue is. You kind of just got what you got when you unload here. Hunter Sherberg, Logan CV. We did not see the 86 make an appearance, so that puts all rumors to bed. Must be still in the trailer. <laughs> it's there in case of emergency. There you go. It would be cool to see Billy get back in it. I, I, I know they tried. <laughs> I think that Billy's smarter than that, though. <laughs> see Jesse Love there in the 97 was racing a Legends car yesterday at Charlotte Motor Speedway. There's Anthony Macri, late substitution in the Chris Dyson number 99. Now there's our flowers, they're still there. Yeah. Yeah, Macri was super impressive to watch uh, over at Port Royal. I think he has the most wins at Port Royal Speedway. Was a contender there at the Tusky as well. He was on a tear, picked up three or four in a row at Port Royal. 
during the middle of the season. Also, you know, a standout in Central PA 410 action. That car maintained for Chris Dyson by Shawn Michael. And Shawn went to the well to find a pretty good kid to put in at very last minute. So be an interesting rookie voyage for Anthony here at Chili Bowl 2021. The flowers are still standing. That's going to be the true test is we'll, we'll see by the end of the week. I mean, that's how after these, four lap, five these, laps of hot laps. Yeah, how these stems <laughs> look here on the, on the back. Well, we've seen guys. Guys claim that they, you know, oh, I was just smoking, so, you know, like guy behind me couldn't see it, right? Right, right. Maybe he's trying to send them out? Yes, yes uh, he could. Right? Yeah, maybe they do smell good. I think that's it. Uh, unless these guys are going to get more green flag laps. They're going up ramp, so... There is somebody on the ramp going down, but just a single car. So maybe somebody going to fire. But, yeah, this is the end of the last scheduled practice session for Monday. So just like that, 29 groups, 307 entries have all made laps around River Spirit Expo Center here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our NOS Energy Drink ramp cam. You see the drivers pulling back up. I always take a look at this picture and it just reminds anyone that's ever competed in this building, whether it's the shootout or the Chili Bowl, it's one of the most nerve-wracking trips down a ramp I've ever been on. And Dylan, you can attest that too. That's when the butterflies really hit you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, when you when you are parked there waiting to roll out for your you know your heat race or whatever it is, it's uh, that's when it, it gets real. You know, you, you know you're next on track and you know you've got a job to do and left with nothing but your thoughts and hear the hear the cars and see all the fans and everything else it's uh it's unlike anything else so that was i think that was tyler edwards who actually just wheeled down and he just turned around and made the way back up on that particular one so uh, gotcha. so that was tyler edwards the last car um so that's going to do it we'll sign off here on the uh, facebook page for flow racing and get ready again tonight hot laps at five central time that's six in the east three in the west be sure to join at flowracing.com pick up your subscription early if you haven't already if you're already a subscriber you don't got to do anything extra or just turn on Flow Racing, click the button, you're ready to go. Exciting night tonight, guys. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Dylan, Chris, for Dylan Welch and Chris Wilner. My name is Caleb Hart. We'll see you a little bit later on, 5 o'clock Central, on flowracing.com here, live at the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals.